All right, so uh, as I say every single time, uh, I hope you guys can all, all right, hear me so, out there. All right, so as I say every uh, single time, of course I got the freaking. Uh, I hope you guys can all, all right, hear me so, out there. All right, so as I say every uh, single time, of course I got the freaking. Uh, I hope you guys. Game. All right, turn that off. At least, hey, that way we know it's working, right? Uh, so you'll notice I have the the display here or whatever full screened, and uh, then you can see how uh, noisy the picture is because the light down here is actually pretty low. Uh, but that's for a reason. Uh, the first thing, which is uh, very obvious, is people might be wondering what's going on in in this area right here, uh, and uh, and that is that we got a new kind of a new microphone set up. Now, um, you know, I've obviously enjoyed doing these streams uh, quite a bit, but one of the things about them that uh, I've never been a huge fan of is the audio quality of my voice. And uh, that is because, um, I mean, I don't want to make a long story out of this, but, um, you know, I had this microphone. When I bought the camera that I now use on the show, which you can just barely see sitting on the arcade cabinet right there, uh, it's just a Sony uh, camcorder. It's nothing special. But um, I bought a, a microphone to put on top of it, this little baby shotgun microphone that... Um, that road makes. And I ended up not liking it. My whole idea was I could take that microphone and uh, turn it around uh, backwards. Oh, crap. The the stream is unlisted. How am I going to... How are we going to fix that? Hmm. Give me a second. I think we can fix this without uh, having to uh, screw with things. Like I said, it's always something, right? Sorry for the thumping. Of course I'm not. Worst case scenario, we might have to stop the stream and restart it, but I really don't think so. Um, oh my god, they're, they're really forcing the new YouTube studio on you, which is super annoying. Um, YouTube, for some reason, insists on forcing things on you that you don't want and fixing things that are not broken. Oh, yeah, here we go. All right. Now it's set to public. So somebody tell me if it doesn't uh, show up, because uh, obviously the fact that it's unlisted is uh, is not good. So... um Hopefully it shows up. I'm kind of tempted to stop the stream and restart it. Shows up. Okay, great. All right, good. We don't have to stop anything. All right, well, hopefully that's going to be our technical hiccup uh, for the for the day. And uh, the reason that... Hold on, this is too loud in my ears. Uh, the reason that it was set to, to unlisted is that I did a, a... I mean, I called it the secret stream. It wasn't that it was secret. It was that... Uh, I wanted to test out this whole new microphone setup, but I didn't want it to be a stream that, that kind of went out to everybody. So it was just a stream for uh, like Discord people. But uh, anyway, as I was saying, I had this microphone that uh, I tried to repurpose it. It was a little shotgun microphone that I thought, well, I can turn it around on the camera so that it's pointed at me while I'm like filming things. And... Um, and, you know, that way I can use it, like, if I'm narrating while I'm showing people, I don't, I don't know, I don't, I buy things because I think they're neat is what it comes down to, like, equipment for the show. And, um, I ended up not liking it, and that's why I used the lapel mic for a while instead. But anyway, in an attempt to somehow reuse the microphone for something, I had it mounted on a little, like, Gorillapod tripod, and that was sitting here on the desk, pointed at me, and then, uh... That was plugged into a little Zoom H1 that I just used as a USB audio interface. And, um, so much crap on the desk. And it just really sounded like crap. And, uh, so just quickly, so this is a, an Audio Technica AT2020, uh, microphone. It's the microphone that I have used. Uh, I bought this microphone and the mixer that I'm about to show you, like the week before I started the YouTube channel, because it was the two things I needed. Like I had a camera. But uh, I didn't have uh, anything to use to, to capture audio. So I bought this microphone, uh, or the I have two of them. So it was either this one or the other one. Like, who cares? And I bought a mixer, and I bought a little uh, 
USB audio uh, interface. And uh, I've always been very, this is not an expensive microphone, particularly it's like a hundred bucks, which might, I mean, a hundred dollars is a lot of money. I'm not saying it's not, but for a microphone, it's, you know, pretty low. Uh, you can buy cheaper ones, but you know, you can buy a microphone for like 10 or 20 bucks, but you can also buy a microphone for like $5,000. So a hundred dollars is definitely on the low end. Um, but I've just always been happy with how I sounded, uh, through it. But the problem is, is just because of the way I'm sitting at this desk, I really had no way to get this microphone up. Like this is, this microphone is that far away from my mouth. And that's the way it should be. Like you have to be on top of these microphones because as you get back, you can, you know, it, the fall off is, is pretty quick. So, um, anyway, the only thing that I needed was like one of these microphone boom arms. And, uh, I guess the main reason I'm telling you guys this is it's like, you know, when you're driving somewhere and maybe like, you know, your local, like whatever your version of Caltrans is or whatever, you know, they're doing some road work or someone's building a new bridge and, uh, you'll see a sign that says something like your tax dollars at work. Well, in a way, this is kind of like your tax dollars at work because, you know, uh, obviously we get a lot of generous people who, you know, they do the super chat contributions and this is exactly the kind of stuff that, uh, that, that gets applied to is it lets us have stuff like this. And now we have much better sounding uh, audio. And so I'm just going to take the the camera off real fast and just kind of show it to you. And uh, and then we'll get back to doing other things. So so you can see uh, here's this uh, boom arm. And uh, you can buy really, really cheap boom arms. And well, like anything else in life, you can buy really, really expensive boom arms. This one was about 60 bucks, which, uh, again, is probably on the lower end. But like, I mean, you can buy a boom arm on, on Amazon for like, Fifteen dollars, but uh, they're not even as good as like a swing arm lamp, and uh, certainly it wouldn't hold a microphone this heavy. So uh, this one was, like I said, sixty bucks, really not too bad, and really was funded with super chat contributions. So it's just sort of like you know, thank you to you guys, but also so you just sort of see where uh, where your money's going. And then this is the um, mixer. I don't know what the model. It's some Mackie mixer. I don't know the model number. I mean, who cares? It's not a USB mixer or anything. But the other nice thing that this is going to allow, uh, see, I have the microphone cable here going into channel one, and then these cables here, that's actually whatever video game console we're playing. And uh, and then I have the headphone output going into these uh, ridiculous headphones that I'm wearing, which, uh, just a minute, now it's going to be all screwed up right now, that's a, it's fine. Uh, I realize, I, at least in my opinion, I look kind of ridiculous right now. I feel like I'm trying to look like a 20-year-old tw uh, Twitch streamer, which uh, is not the case. It's just um, I don't have anything else really right now. I need to get, like, some earbuds that uh, aren't, like, hyped up somehow. Like, I have some Skull Candy earbuds, but they're way too bassy. And I want to I wanna hear what I actually sound like, not um, not what Skull Candy thinks that I want my music to sound like. So, um I'm not really planning on continuing to wear these because uh, plus they're just going to be hot. And uh, but yeah, so I mean, I guess that's kind of it as far as that goes. I just wanted to kind of show you guys that. But what I was saying is like this way I can I, I'm going to hear the, the exact same audio you guys hear. So I'm going to hear the game audio at the proper level uh, in my in my headphones. And that way, if it's too loud or too quiet, I can just reach over and adjust it on uh, on the mixer. Because what I was doing was just watching the audio levels in OBS and if something seemed like it was too high or too low, I was changing it. But I would go back and I would watch the archives of the live streams just to see how I was doing. And I would hear, oh, that's too loud or that's too quiet because the way I was doing it was really like ass backwards. And, uh, and then the other reason that uh, we have the whole full screen thing going on is, uh, you know, normally I would not uh, do something like this on a live stream uh, just because that's not why any of us are here. But uh, I got a pretty cool package in the mail yesterday and I'm... I'm not going to start doing the mail segment on the live stream, so please don't worry. But uh, I think you guys will want to see this. And uh, when I got this, my wife was asking me, like, oh, are you going to make a special video about this? And uh, no. And uh, I'll explain why uh, in just a minute. But again, kind of like the boom arm here, uh, this is kind of, uh, this is for you guys just as much as it's um, for me. So... And this is certainly not something that I ever thought that I cared about getting uh, until I got it. And uh, and now that I have it, I got to say it's pretty dang cool. And uh, that is my 
YouTube 100,000 uh, subscriber, uh, whatever you call it. What is it, a plaque? I don't know. Um, I was just really excited when it got here. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't have something like this if it wasn't uh, if it wasn't for you guys. So, like I said, it's as much yours as it is mine. And, uh, you know, my wife also wanted to know, like, oh, are you going to put it up, like, you know, on the wall back here so everybody can see it during the live streams? And, and no, I'm not. Um, and part of that I'll explain quickly just, and, and I know we, we're here to play video games and so I'll, I'll keep it short, but, um, you know, when, when the channel hit 10,000 subscribers, I did like a special video because I don't know, I, I guess I felt like that's somehow what you're supposed to do. And, uh, pretty quickly, I just felt like it was a really cringy thing to do. Like in my opinion, uh, it's not for you to pat yourself on the back. It's for others, you know, not that I'm saying I want to be patted on the back, but I'm just saying, I'm not really into the whole self-congratulatory scene. And so that's why I wouldn't do something like make a special video just to show people this thing. Um, but for the same reason, I, I don't really want to hang it up in the background just because I see other YouTubers doing it. And I mean, I don't care what they do. It's not like it bothers me, but it's just like, uh, I don't like the optics and I don't want to do that. But what I do want to do is uh, I want to hang this over the desk where I do all my video editing. Uh, I think that's a more appropriate place to put it. And um, and I mean, I guess you guys will see it in the background then when I'm doing like a, a flashback episode because it'll be right over the monitor. But uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, I, I was actually going to wait and not open the box uh, until tonight, but I really just couldn't wait um, to, uh, to check it out. And it's really heavy, I got to say. I'm not going to name names, but uh, I've got a friend who's also a YouTuber who got one of these a few months ago. And, uh, and he mentioned to me that, uh, he was kind of disappointed. He's like, oh, it's just like cardboard. I don't, I'm not sure what he's talking. I don't know if he thought this was like solid aluminum. It's like a, it's like brushed aluminum veneer. And then I don't know what's inside, but I mean, who cares? But this thing's actually pretty weighty. So, uh, but anyway, I don't know. So anyway, like I said, uh, thanks to all of you guys for this. Like I said, it's as much yours as it is mine. And, uh, that's pretty much all I've got for, uh, public service announcements, uh, for tonight. So. Uh, I just got to put this down real fast and um, get this garbage out of my way. I know we can live down there. That's fine. And uh, and we'll get on with the stream. And uh, as I think everybody has seen, uh, we're going to be playing uh, some PlayStation tonight. Now, this is the first time we have plugged in the uh, the PlayStation. Here we'll go. We can switch to... All right. I don't know. You may have may or may not have heard me there. I get, uh, maybe I didn't set up something right in OBS, but we're cool. But uh, anyway, you know, we did the the PlayStation Classic uh, live stream, and that was cool or whatever. But um, we had never actually plugged in a PlayStation. So uh, now I've got uh, one. Of, for some reason, I have like five PlayStations, which I don't understand really why. It's like I got a mini one. I've got my original one. I have one that has a mod chip in it. I have this one, which is the 1001 that's in like mint condition. Because uh, for a while, people were saying how these were like the best PlayStations to have. And uh, I think that is sort of a myth that's been debunked at this point. But, um, uh, and then I have another uh, 1001 where the uh, optical drive is broken. So that's the one that I'm going to put my PSIO or whatever it's called in uh, whenever that gets here. But um, this live stream is sort of dedicated to somebody, uh, uh, a Discord chat regular. Uh, which, by the way, if you're watching this, if you're not in the Discord and you want to be, uh, somebody can put up a, a link. I guess I could put up a link, actually, real quick uh, while I'm flapping my gums. Uh, anyway, this guy, I'm, I'm not going to, I don't want to put him on the spot, you know, so I'm going to, he can, uh, he can re remain nameless. But uh, he's just someone to call him a, to call him a PlayStation fan is really not to uh, do justice to the strong feelings that he has about such an amazing console. In fact, uh, you know, he has a website and, uh, you know, he, he likes to write articles about like his top 10 favorite video games for each console. And, uh, so strongly does he feel about the PlayStation library that he, he said he just couldn't, he couldn't pick 10 games, which I, I totally relate to. Cause like, that was the problem with the PlayStation classic, right? Was like, there's 20 games on there, which I thought at least, you know, 16, 17 of them were, were great games. But everybody's like, well, it doesn't have this and it doesn't have that because there's so many great games on the PlayStation, uh, in the PlayStation library 
that, you know, you can't settle on just 20. And that's the problem uh, that uh, that this person had is that, uh, you know, he couldn't, you know, you, you couldn't settle on 10. So, uh, yeah, anyway, and, uh, you know, because the, the, the library is so huge and has so many awesome games in it, um, I wanted to have some way to kind of limit the selection of, uh, of what we could play. And uh, I figured, well, what if we just say we're only going to play long box games? And uh, which, uh, along the same lines, uh, I was thinking it would be cool to do a, a Nintendo live stream where we only play uh, black box games. And credit where credit is due, I got that idea uh, from a recent BitHead 1000 video, so I don't want to uh, take credit for that. But that was a great video that he did. And uh, there's a lot of um, black box games that I don't have much experience with, but that look cool, like Balloon Fight. And so I thought it would be cool uh, to check those out. So real quickly, I guess I'll just show you the games that I brought down. I didn't bring down all my long box games because I have a lot. And uh, I think there's too many games here for us to get to um, to all of them. But I'll just show you what we have. So uh, the game that's already in the console that we're going to get started with, uh, just because, I don't know, it seems like a good starter game, is the Raiden Project, which uh, I covered in the PlayStation launch episode. Uh, a game that I'm kind of looking forward, uh, one of the videos that I, I haven't started working on it or anything because I have other things to do, but uh, a video that I'm looking forward to doing sometime soon is uh, the Sony PlayStation in 1995, where we'll take a look at the uh, post-launch uh, 1995 games. And one of the games that I like from that time period is Loaded. So we can check that one out. I feel like these are going to fall. Nah, now we're good the rest of the stack uh i mean here's a game that needs no introduction uh wipeout and uh, i don't have the nedgecon controller down here i have a standard well i mean it's one of these uh special colored controllers but i mean it's a standard non-analog controller because that's what you would have had if you were playing these games uh back in the long box days so we, we would be playing wipeout with just a regular controller uh, ESPN Extreme Games, which is kind of funny because, uh, you know, I, I talked about this game, obviously, in the launch episode and uh, and the fact that I'm not the hugest fan of it. But like because I did that launch episode, it's like somehow it gives me nostalgia for the games that I talked about. And so I wouldn't mind um, checking it out again. And then I have three games here that are 3DO games that came to the uh, PlayStation. And that's Gex. Road and Track presents the need for speed. And finally, uh, Road Rash. So uh, those are all just potential games that we can play again. I don't think we can get to all of them. So uh, all that being said, um, we will uh, go ahead and uh, I'm going to switch the view. The The mixer should already be added. If it's not, I'll, I'll see it and I'll add it. So And then I'll have to uh, bring up the game audio because right now I have it uh, muted. Oh, good. So the mixer is there. So that's nice. Uh, what happened here? Hmm. I had it all. It's funny. I had this all dialed in before the stream started, and I don't know why uh, why it did this. I don't really understand OBS sometimes. Wouldn't it be nice if at some point I could just kind of get my stuff together and we could have a live stream without having this kind of stuff happen? It just wouldn't be a CGQ live stream if everything went smoothly. Okay. All right. Uh, hopefully that's a good... You know, I like I want to keep the, the volume fairly low, but you should be able to at least kind of hear it. And uh, Frankie White, uh, thank you so much for the uh, contribution. And Frankie White is also a member of the channel, so I appreciate that. And uh, if you're a member of the channel and you join uh, the Discord server, uh, you don't really get anything all that great at the moment. But there is a special uh, channel that maybe at some point I'll do something with. Oh, somebody sent me a link that, um, and we'll play both Raiden and Raiden 2. Uh, somebody sent me a link showing me that you can actually um, have uh, video chats with, I think, up to nine people on, uh, on Discord. And that was one of the things I really wanted to do uh, for people who are channel members is, is maybe we could have, you know, obviously it's not going to be possible for us to all ever uh, get together in person uh, just for, you know, logistical, uh, geographical reasons. But uh, I guess having like a video chat uh, would be the next best thing. 
and uh, you know you are limited to only nine people, so I I could just have like multiples or something. Um, I mean, I don't know if that's something anybody would even be interested in. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to make it seem like I'm so full of myself that like you know people want to have video chats with me. I mean, certainly you don't have to, but um, but I think it would be fun. It's like it's neat doing uh, the streaming, right? Because then it's like I'm on camera and like I'm talking to you guys and and reading what you're saying in the chat, but uh, it still feels uh, pretty one sided. Uh, so it would be cool if um, if we could do some kind of video chat type of thing. Which, uh, uh, you know, speaking of the uh, of the chat room, you know, I realized that you know the last week's stream, the Mister Stream with Smoke Monster, which I thought went very well, and I really enjoyed having. Uh, God dang it! Um, I really enjoyed having Smoke Monster on the show, but uh, I'm also very cognizant to the fact that uh, I didn't do a good job of keeping an eye on the chat. Which I think I've kind of just come to the conclusion that that is always going to be a problem. Uh, wow. Uh, I haven't played Raiden in a long time. Uh, that's always going to be a problem, I think, when, when I have a show with guests. Because I've also noticed every single time I do a live stream and have a guest, I always tell the guests, like, hey, can you help me keep an eye on the live stream? Or uh, on, the, on the chat, rather. And they always say, like, oh, yeah, yeah, no problem. And then they never do. And I think the reason is just that, you know, they have the same problem I do, like... That person and I are trying to carry on a conversation, and you just can't really do that and also keep an eye on the chat. That would be like if you were talking to somebody in person and at the same time uh, trying to also eavesdrop on uh, somebody's conversation at the next table or something. So I think it's just going to sort of be uh, the nature of the beast when I have um, guests on the live streams that that is going to mean that... Um, that Nobody's keeping quite as much of an eye uh, on the chat, which is why I like doing uh, streams where we don't have um, guests. Get out of here. Oh, no. Is that game over already? Wow, that was quick. Uh, we'll play again. Sorry, I, uh, I haven't played this one in a while, and um, well, I don't want to make excuses. I just suck. How about that? Uh, so I was going to check, speaking of that, I'm going to check the chat here uh, real fast. Uh, Teresa wants a video chat with the chickens. Well, man, maybe I could make that happen uh, somehow. Um, camera stream the chicks. It was, I mean, they are, honestly, those chickens are uh, pretty entertaining to watch, uh, to be honest with you. Um, Teresa says, I, I can watch it, but I don't know how I can better point out the comments. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, it's like, it's just on me to keep an eye on the chat. Like, there's not any way anybody else could... Um, could do that. Uh, Tahit asks, didn't the original Resident Evil also come in a long box? Yeah, I have that. Although, as I said, I did that like nine hour long video about um, my PlayStation collection. Uh, if I remember correctly, I think that the music for some reason doesn't work on my copy. I don't know how that's even possible. I guess the maybe the disc is damaged in just the right spot so that it can't read the music, but the game still works. Uh, I don't know. Um, could also strap a camera on a chicken to go for Yeah, they wouldn't go for that, uh, for sure. Uh, is there a best Raiden port? The Raiden games on each system seem pretty much the same. Well, I would consider this the best Raiden port, but you have to be willing to rotate your monitor and put in the uh, GameShark uh, cheat code, as I uh, mentioned in uh, the launch episode. Uh, playing it this way is really not optimal, but uh, at least this way they tried to maintain the aspect ratio. Uh, without losing a bunch of the screen. Uh, if you play it on like the Jaguar or something, you lose a lot of the top and the bottom and they put that stupid status area over on the side. But I guess what were they supposed to do? Uh, do you have Rayman or Jumping Flash? Uh, yeah, you know, I have both of those and I meant to bring down... I meant to bring down Jumping Flash and I don't know what happened. But, you know, if I end up taking a break like halfway through the stream, I can run upstairs and uh, and I, well, I could get either one of them. Um, I don't... I was asleep at the wheel, I guess. I don't know why I didn't grab those, because I, I even um, I even put Jumping Flash in the thumbnail because we were going to check it out. So uh, do I have Johnny Bazooka Tone? I don't know what that is. I'm sorry. Uh, and somebody says, do you have trolls or something? Um, I don't I mean, trolls stop by. I don't, I don't know what your question is. Not not too much. So, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's how I feel, Cody. I'm, I'm really not that great at, um, at streaming. And while he says you didn't get a notification for this, I think that might be because um, 
uh, when we first started the stream, uh, it was unlisted. And so I wonder if that means people did not get um, notified or something, which uh, if that's the case, that's a shame. But um, I just didn't I didn't want to stop the stream and restart it. And there, it, there's like 50 people in here. So I think it's I think it's cool. Uh, oh, man, wrong button. I kind of wish I'd brought my arcade stick down here, but um, oh, well. I got to be honest, man. I, I'm really hot. Uh, I got this hat on and I got that's why see I don't really aside from the fact that like I said I, I'm, I don't really want to look like uh, some 20 year old Call of Duty Twitch streamer or something uh, these headphones are just like super hot and which is funny because when I got these headphones they had um, like the the pads on them where I don't know what you even it's like it was like some kind of soft touch but it, I don't it was more like a vinyl type material it wasn't vinyl but um and so they really didn't breathe, and so my ears would be, like, all sweaty, which I understand is kind of TMI. But uh, So I replaced them with these velour pads. But even still, it's just they're super hot. And the weather here today was uh, was actually pretty warm. Dang it, I grabbed the wrong... Well, that's not so bad, I guess. Uh, the weather today was pretty warm. Like, I actually kind of wish I wore in shorts today. But um, because of the type of job I do, I actually can't wear shorts at work for, for safety reasons. Uh, although at work, I'm constantly flouting the rules and doing it anyway. But, um, but yeah, so it's it's a little bit warm. And then I, I don't really need to have this uh, sweater on, but I only have a t-shirt on underneath it. And uh, I don't really like the look of just wearing t-shirts. So uh, no judgment to anybody else. But at some point, I, I just kind of got to a point where I started wearing uh, collared shirts. Uh, and I only really wear, wear a t-shirt now. Dang it. Uh, I only wear a t-shirt now if it's like the weekend and I'm just kind of staying home. Or if I'm going to wear a, a sweater over it so that it doesn't matter. Oh, these guys are going to be a problem. Get through this guy. Get out of here. Man. I need, to, I need to power up my dude here, but... Man. I hate to waste a bomb like that, but... Oh, jeez, I wasn't paying attention. All right. Uh, game over, right? Yeah, let's play... Um, Let's play some Raiden 2 real fast. I, I apologize for the um, crappy gameplay. After Chris discussed Adventures of Lomax, I was intrigued. I was surprised to find it's a pretty pricey game. When did I discuss Adventures of Lomax? Was that on a magazine read through? I don't even remember that, which is kind of sad. The only PS1 long box game that Derek has is Nova Storm by Cygnosis. I think I have Nova Storm. Um... Yeah. Hey, wake up. It's not going to make me replay this. Is there a way for me to back out? With I don't want to restart to... Oh, actually, I should reset the PlayStation because we did not get to hear the best console startup sound ever. So I'm even going to turn up the volume a little bit. Ready? Oh, man, I need a cigarette right now after that. Anyway, that's dirty. I apologize. Um, oh, and thank you, Teresa, for uh, putting the link to the Discord. Uh, I know it's probably kind of annoying, but we always post uh, the Discord links that um, that expire in 24 hours. And the reason for that is that that way later when bots show up looking for Discord links... Uh, so that they can come, uh, you know, do their bot business in the Discord, it uh, the, the link won't work. So in, in an ideal world, I could just post a permanent link and it wouldn't be a problem. Uh, ooh, BB Garnett says, uh, Raiden Project Longbox, Loose 36, CIB 63. Ouch. That's, uh, I don't remember what I paid for this. Uh, I think I got it in, um, well, not a lot, but it, I think somebody was selling some games on the forums and I got like... Um, I got like three games, and uh, I don't remember what they were. I think I think Rayman was one of them, and then this was one, and I, I forgot what the third one was. And I remember that, uh, you know, I, I asked the because I was uh, bundling three games together. I, you know, I asked the guy for a little bit better of a deal. You know, like twenty percent off or something. Uh, like, let's just say, if, for instance, if the total was like one fifty, 
maybe I offered him 130 or something. And then I remember that he came back and said, well, how about 120 because the Raiden Project disc has some writing on it. And like for whatever reason on this Raiden Project uh, disc, there's like a Sharpie pen written uh, letter B, which I'm sure if I actually cared about, uh, I could get uh, right off. But uh, I don't care. It had a little bit of stickum on it, but I just had to use some Goo Gone to get rid of that. And the case isn't really nice. The case has some stickers on it. Um, I think, well, here, I'll, I'll show you just because maybe this will be a, a walk down memory lane for some people. Uh, well, I guess it's partially um, taken off. It says something about this case is empty. To see store associate, this pink what was that was that KB. I feel like it wasn't, but I can't remember where it was from. But anyway, he gave me an even better deal than I asked for, and uh, so that was nice. And it wasn't like, uh, uh, ooh, that was close, you know. And it wasn't like a, because I have a YouTube channel kind of thing. It was just because I was an established member of the forums, I think, uh, kind of thing. So we we want to try to pick up the the purple weapon if we can. I kind of forgot. Um, oh, here we go. So let's, we're gonna kill this guy and then wait until that icon turns purple. There it is, all right. And right now, uh, that is very unimpressive. But, oh, there we go. See, you can get it. You have to push the button like ridiculously fast and then it turns into this homing beam. Uh, which, oh, which is nice. This game's got some pretty good music, too, I think. I guess maybe you guys can't hear it that well. I'm going to turn it up. I don't know why the, the the audio signal coming out of the PlayStation is, like, super loud. Like, I have this turned down pretty much all the way. All right, we're not going to make it if we got to wait. Oh, I knew that was going to happen. Uh, anyway, I mean, I have the, the mixer. I have it turned down, um, ooh, almost as far as it'll go. Uh, I don't know why the sound uh, signal coming out of the PlayStation is so frickin' hot, but uh, but whatever. I said frickin' before anybody says anything. I need a turbo button. There we go. Oh boy, that's that sound. Oh, so that that sound is bad. The zzz, anyway, like what are we saving them for, right? Really? Now there's another one. Anyway, all right. Um, well, all right. So maybe that's enough of a riding project there. Um, and then I'm gonna I want to scroll up in the chat here a little bit and make sure I'm not uh, missing anything important. I love having this mixer; it's so much easier. Uh, Dickens says uh, I can't recall when you mentioned we briefly discussed it fairly yeah i think i i feel like i might have talked about that in like a magazine reads or something adventures of lomax there um i'm glad to see a few people enjoyed the startup sound i just you know i um as i've discussed many times uh you know i had the playstation uh back when it was current it was the first system that i bought uh, sort of as a working adult, you know, like I bought it with my own money and everything. And, and I have a, it's got a, I got a real soft spot for it. And like, so that startup sound, uh, I, I love it, you know, like I, I would, I'd make it my ringtone, except then I would get sick of it. So, um, uh, so I don't, uh, so Derek told me if he says buy X, Y, Z game, I'm going to tell him no. Yeah. That's probably a good idea. Derek, Derek buys a lot of games. Um, Cody needs to use his grill more. I like grilling, but the cleanup is a nuisance. Like, what cleanup? That's the point of using a, a grill is like self-cleaning. Uh, Gradius Gaiden has better music for me. Uh, I don't know. I, I would have to play it to remind myself.
didn't you play this game in an earlier stream? Uh, no, I played it. I, I played it in that launch video, but um, but that's it. Uh, all right. Anyway, well, see now somebody else is asking for Jumping Flash too, so I'll I'll run upstairs at some point and grab Jumping Flash. It's my mistake for not doing so. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch the game now, and uh, I don't know to what, but. You know, it's funny, this is my own live stream, but I posted a link to the Discord chat and it removed it. It said, remove any web addresses and try again. So I don't know what's up with that. I, I don't know if I'm logged into the wrong account or something. Oh, well, since I have the disc out, I guess it's not a B. I don't know what it is, but um, well, this is in the way. But you can see, well, here, that way. I guess it's a P. Well, I mean, it depends, right? Then, well, then it's a D. But I don't know. Like, I don't care. And if, like I said, if I really wanted to, I'm sure I could get that off uh, with some uh, with some solvent. Uh, Chris, brushing the cooking service and cleaning the burnt on bits. I mean, do you just do you have a? I just use a wire brush to clean it. But um, I usually, to be honest, I clean it the next time I use it because I get to let it warm up anyway. So um, that burns a lot of it off anyhow. Uh, anyway, okay, so what do you want to play next? Uh, I feel like if we play Wipe, well, I'll warn you guys right now, I'm not going to be that good at any of these games. So, um, but you know, Loaded was a game that, uh, I did play a little bit. That was like my test game to make sure that this whole, um, that the setup works with the PlayStation. Like, I don't ever take it for granted that, uh, this is going to work with anything because of course it's going through the, uh, OSSC which uh, outputs a non-standard resolution, but, uh, you know, this capture card that I have uh, is, is really good about that. So, uh, so far I have yet to have any problems. Well, Cody, I mean, what kind of grill do you have? Is it is the actual grill itself cast iron or, or is it not? Because that would probably make a difference too, I guess. But uh, you may also just be extra picky about how, how clean your grill is. Um, I mean, I don't know. I always think it's kind of disgusting that I don't clean the grill that much, but I've never gotten sick either. So you have a Weber, the great is stainless steel. Um, yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't know. Like I have a Weber as well. But mine's cast iron. Um, aside from heat retention, I don't know what would make one any better than the other. So yeah, Jameson, that's kind of what I'm saying. I just wait until the next time it's hot and, um, Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say what game we're playing? Loaded? I think I said that right. Loaded. Um, real sick game. So, uh, I don't know. That's what's fun about it, I guess. But um, you used to use aluminum foil on the grate for easy cleanup. What? You can't do that. Sorry, it's loading. Power's out at the house, so I'm going to miss the stream. I'll watch it later. That sucks, man. Um... Sorry, Mike, that, that sucks. I always worry about that, you know, like one of these, it's going to happen, you know, like one of these Tuesdays. Is it doing anything? This game kind of, I had a problem with it not working uh, one time last night, so I'll, I'm going to try putting it in, taking it out, putting it in. Let me make sure there's nothing on the disc. Um, I always figure that one of these Tuesdays, um, ooh, there's a scratch on it. Either my power is going to be out or my internet's going to be out. And, uh, and how bad would that suck? So, uh, let's try it. We're gonna try booting this one more time. And if it, it, if it gives me any more guff, then we're gonna, sadly, we're gonna move on and, uh, maybe I'll get this disc resurfaced. Although, you know, sometimes I've, I've tried using uh, plastic polish myself on, uh, on discs and had pretty good luck. OG Xbox startup is badass. Yeah, it's, it is pretty cool. Um, when I got my Xbox, I pretty much, uh, modded it straight away. So, um, that's not a startup sound I've heard that many times. Yeah. Wire brush. Yeah. That's what you got to get a wire brush. Although, you know, I, it's funny. I was, I made some guy laugh at Costco. Uh, it's spinning. Uh, they, they have these things at Costco. Right, oh, here we go. They have these things at Costco right now that they look like wooden. Well, they are wooden paddles. It's like a paddle with a handle on it. And then maybe it looks like a gigantic wooden spatula. And I guess the idea is that you're supposed to um, scrub your grill with it. And then it like wears into the grooves of your grill as you use it more. I, I don't know. Uh, but I made some joke that it reminds me of like, you know, when we were in elementary school, I think we all heard the exact same rumor. 
no matter what elementary school you went to, that in the principal's office, there was a big wooden paddle like hanging on the wall. And if your parents signed a consent form, you, you know, the, the, the principal could, could, you know, paddle you with it. And uh, whether or not that's true, I don't know. I got to be honest and say that I don't think I ever saw the inside of the principal's office when I was in elementary school. But that's exactly what that um, reminded me of. And I said something to my wife and some guy overheard me and started laughing. Because I, I said, well, of course they can't come out and say that it's to beat your kids with. So they say it's a it's a grill cleaner. But I mean, just look at it and you'll know what it is. I mean, it looks awfully similar to um, the paddles in like Dazed and Confused. All right, anyway, uh, so we got the game going. This is a character select screen. Uh, there's these six characters you can pick that are all really creepy looking. Uh, here's like a gigantic man baby, uh, which I think I've actually been called before. Uh, creepy clown, you gotta have a creepy clown. Uh, Bouncer, who uh, is wearing some kind of weird thing. I don't, I'm always, uh, well, I'll show you at the end. And then Vox is, of course, the chick with the Oakley blades. This guy, Butch, I don't know what he's got going on and why he's wearing grandma's dress. But I'm always this guy, uh, Captain Hands, uh, just because he has a skeleton torso and a couple of guns. I don't know. I think he looks kind of cool. So we're going to be him. Uh, I Am Psy says that wooden paddle was absolutely real in my school. Like, I don't know if it was real. I mean, the thing is, I grew up in California, and I kind of have to believe that that probably wasn't legal here. Although that was the 80s, so so who knows? I'm sorry, that was probably really loud. I should lean over when I'm drinking water. I, I have a weird thing. I hate that sound. Like if it's like one of those unreasonable things. Like if my wife's next to me on the couch and she's like sipping tea, like I can hear her sipping it and then I hear it get swallowed and it's like totally natural, but I'm just like, you know, I, sorry. Uh, you know, when Carl's Jr. for a while, this was a while ago, I guess, but they, they were running those commercials where, uh, you know, they had like, you know, these like hot women, like, uh, eating, um, oh, here we go. So we, you can zoom in, you can zoom out. It's like this third person overhead, uh, type of game. And, um, so we have to go find, uh, the first key cards. You have to find all these key cards. So you can open up the various areas. Uh, I, and I got to remember where they, where they are. So, um, anyway, it was like they had a microphone, like right up against somebody's mouth while they were like biting into a hamburger and chewing it. And I hated those commercials because just because I have a weird thing with that kind of uh, sound. So anyway, point being, I am going to try not to drink water uh, right up against the microphone. Wasn't Paris Hilton in one of those Carl Jr. commercials? I think I think she was. Oh, there it is right there. Uh, okay, so that was the yellow key card. You can see up in the uh, upper left-hand corner there, there's that little yellow dash. That just means we have the yellow key card. And so now you can open any doors that have yellow lights around them, which I think are all the way up at the top. I want to say they're down this way. And I don't, I mean, if somebody, oh, here we go. I don't know if somebody knows the sort of the story with this game. It, it seems like you're in some kind of insane asylum or something. Uh, and as you can see, it's like super bloody, which is kind of like what, uh, I mean, that's not what the PlayStation was known for, but I feel like, and I think I've said this before, but you know, um, you know, I felt like the Genesis sort of marketed itself as like, you know, when for people who are like my age. And so you had a Nintendo when you were in like elementary school and like, you know, maybe junior high or something like when you were sort of a kid and then you get a little bit older. And so it's like you want something that's a little bit edgier. And, and if you were that person, then it's like, you know, the, the Genesis was going to appeal to you uh, because it had, you know, a lot of games on them that, you know were a little bit more violent or whatever. And uh, I kind of feel like the the PlayStation just took that to the next level. And it's like, okay, you, you had a Nintendo, and oh my god, this guy won't die. Finally. Uh, you know, you had a Nintendo, and then you graduated to the Genesis, you know, when you were in, like, high school. And, you know, maybe now you're, like, in, you know, you're in college or you're out in the workforce or whatever. And so now you want to go for something like the, like the PlayStation uh, rather than the N64, I guess. I don't really know. I mean, I'm not... I'm not judging anybody who had a Super Nintendo or an N64. Those are those are great systems. Well, at least the Super Nintendo is. Um, but I guess at least for me, I kind of felt like uh, going the Nintendo Genesis uh, PlayStation route just felt like more of a, a maturation uh, process, if that makes sense. 
Uh, I got a health increase, which is good. I always like, I, maybe I'm not playing this game strategically enough. Um, I mean, you can, maybe it would, it would at least help if I strafed a little bit, but uh, I always just go in guns blazing and then, uh, uh, you know, I end up dying a lot. And uh, I don't, I didn't even see where it was, but if you look up in the uh, upper left now, you can see that there's a green dash. Uh, because we picked up the green key card, and uh, that means that now we can go into the um, the green door. But uh, you know, you always want to go in here and clean up, clear out these rooms. So I, I don't, I guess these are cells. I don't know. You're gonna see later. We're gonna go into a room that's like a padded room. Uh, so I mean, that's that's pretty sick. Um, and hopefully the game audio is loud enough. I could turn it up a little bit. Uh, I mean, the, the music in this game is really nothing to write home about. The music is okay. Uh, and the sound effects, I guess, are also fine. But, um, all right, so now we got to go find... Oh, well, that was a green door. And then we got, you know, this guy again. So I don't know if these are guys are supposed to be sort of like the bosses of the area or something. I don't really get it. Uh, and as you can see also, I mean, this game is very dark. You know, obviously I could I could turn up the brightness a little bit, but really this is how it's supposed to be. So that's a blue door. You can kind of tell because there's that blue tint back there. Even though the door itself really is not blue. Uh, so now we're looking for the uh, green door, which is right there. Definitely helps to use the uh, strafe function. Uh, and I'll pause it in a minute because now I'm curious to hear what people say about uh, about what I said about the uh, Nintendo Genesis PlayStation thing. Maybe everybody thinks I'm way off base or something. Uh, I'm not trying to say that if you got a different system that somehow you were doing the wrong thing. I'm just saying that, at least for me, it just felt like a natural thing to do. Okay, there, that guy dropped the uh, blue key card. So now we could leave the area if we wanted to, but if we go check out uh, these rooms, uh, we can probably... Uh, top up our um, ammo and maybe find a health pack. So, um, why is this guy not dead yet? Die already. Actually, I'm going to pause it now because I feel like I can see things flying by. Oh yeah, I missed all kinds of stuff. Um, ooh, Ryan saw that paddle more than once. What were you doing? My mom always threatened me with a breadboard. Ouch, man. I remember the principal came into our cafeteria angry at us all for being too loud and actually snapped the thing in half by smacking it on the edge of the table. Oh, my God. Like, at my at my elementary school, we had uh, the principal was this guy named Dr. Harrison because he had, like, a PhD in education. And he was, like, this – he was this short – he was short and, short and pretty fat. and uh, But he was actually a really super nice guy, so – uh, none of us were really afraid of him. Uh, Wally Lama says Chris would be awesome on hot ones. Uh, I don't, sorry, but sorry about that too, but, uh, sorry, I don't know what that means. Um, I still think gaming moved to CD too fast. Early CD loading times are a drag. I don't think they're too bad, really. If you play the, uh, the Neo Geo CD, that has painful loading times. I don't really think that the, um, PlayStation loading times for the most part really aren't too bad. Uh, Mujanga says this is isometric doom. Um, that's, that's kind of accurate, actually. It definitely has a, a similar feel to it, uh, without all the satanic whatnot, but, uh, but yeah, it's obviously a very dark and, um, violent game. Uh, someone says playing demos on a console was an extraordinary experience. It's funny because, you know, I was actually thinking about bringing a demo disc down here to check it out. But uh, I didn't know how popular that would be. It would almost be fun to do a live stream of nothing but PlayStation demo discs. And you could look at sort of that. Because I have a ton of them. And you could kind of look at the uh, progression. Sorry, I'm just still trying to get um, caught up here. All right, almost caught up. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're good. All right, so now we're gonna get continue here, and um, I don't, I don't. If someone wants to look at. I don't know what these little gold things are supposed to do. Uh, I just pick them up to pick them up, but it doesn't seem like you have a score. So I don't. Um, I mean, unless it's ammo or something. I guess I kind of don't see the point. Uh, speaking of which, there we just picked up a crate of ammo. 
Although we're doing pretty well on ammo. Um, I'm not being too terribly wasteful. I don't know. Like, I'm picking those things up, but then I don't see any meter moving or anything. Maybe... Maybe we'll see at the end of the level or something. Maybe it'll give me some kind of score or something. Uh, or like I said, if somebody knows, then by all means, uh, speak up. Uh, you also have, I didn't show it, but you also have sort of a super weapon. Uh, that's what those little uh, lightning bolt looking things uh, are. Again, up up there in the corner. Um, it's some sort of, you know, screen clearing type thing. I don't know if it actually clears the entire screen or not, but um, but it would at least help. All right, there we go. So we need, you can see we really needed the health increase there. We were down uh, well below halfway. Uh, so now we've got the blue key card. So now we have to go find the blue door uh, again, which I think was right here. Yep. Oh, my goodness. I'm getting my butt handed to me. I'm going to try to... So I'm trying to play a little bit strategically and, uh, you know, use the strafe feature. Because, uh, as you can see, we're, we're already kind of hurting. I mean, I think, I think whether we like it or not, we're going to die here in a minute. Um, but, yeah, yeah, there we go. We're dead. But, I mean, you get three lives. Uh, and then, I don't know, you can definitely continue. I don't remember how many continues you get. But uh, certainly you get some. And I don't want to spend the whole live stream playing this game, but... It would at least be cool to get to the end of the first level. I mean, I think we can all agree on that. Ah, I see D Forte has shown up. Uh, hopefully, I mean, I don't know did you just, if you just got here. Uh, then I guess you didn't. Uh, you didn't get to see, um, you know, what all of your contributions helped pay for. But uh, I guess, hey man. Um, but I guess you can catch it on the. Um, oh man, how's that guy still there? You can catch it on the archive post. If it, I mean, I'm making the assumption that you missed it. So, but uh, I mean, ultimately the whole point was uh, thank you to you and people like you for uh, helping support the show. Especially now that we don't have sponsorship anymore. But uh, as I, th I can't remember if I talked about that. I might have talked about it in the secret stream. I don't know. I'm actually kind of. Overall, I'm kind of glad not to have the sponsorship uh, anymore, to be honest. Only because I, you know, I like to be able to make content uh, on my own uh, schedule. Speaking of which, I, I should have mentioned this earlier, but I guess I felt like the whole me blabbing and not playing games part was kind of going on too long. But maybe at least in part uh, because of the uh, plaque, uh, it just really kind of got me all uh, amped up about working on the show proper. And uh, so yesterday I started, I've kind of been stuck in like writing hell uh, for a while, uh, just because, I mean, that really is the part, oh man, uh, it's okay, we can hit continue here. Uh, you know, that really is the part of doing the show that takes the longest. And, and when I say the show, I mean like doing something like a launch video. Uh, uh, is just all the writing and all the research. And it, in a way, it's kind of the least fun part. Uh, like I love editing video. So like once... Uh, once we get to that point, uh, at least for me, it, it's fun. But uh, anyway, uh, you know, so I've been working on writing two shows, uh, you know, one of them being the launch of the Dreamcast and the other one um, being something that I'm sort of still keeping under my hat. And uh, but quite a bit of uh, so the one that I'm keeping under my hat uh, is actually the one that's going to come out first. And um, that one is probably 75 percent of the way written. But, you know, as you can probably imagine, uh, you know, shows like that, launch episodes and, and the ilk, are just really split up by game, right? Like, you have the whole intro and sort of historical perspective sequence, and then after that, it's just talking about games. And uh, so what's not done about that one is that there's just there's still a few games that I have to write about. And so we're at a point where at least the, the segments for which the writing is done... Uh, I can go ahead and um, and record the voiceover for those because uh, I need that. Uh, you know, like one of these days I should really make a video. Oh, wait, hold on. Here's the here's the padded room I was telling you about. Like oh, that's just creepy. Like look at all the yellow stains 
uh, on the padding. Like, what do you think that is? Like, pretty obvious. Uh, and then here's like an inmate who's just like sitting there and I just probably killed for no reason. Um, I was saying like one of these days I should make sort of like a, a, a video like showing how um, how my show is made, which is probably the same as how most people's shows are made. Um, you, you can't edit anything until you, you have the voiceover. Like it's no different than say like uh, animation, right? Like if someone's making a cartoon or something, uh, they record the voiceover first and then the animation is done so that it will uh, match up with, uh, with the voiceover. And it's no different with what I'm doing. Like you can't start putting in any kind of footage when you don't have the voiceover uh, already there. And so once I start recording the voiceover, I can go ahead and start actually editing, putting in gameplay footage, et cetera, et cetera. And um, so that's what I started doing yesterday is like what I'm trying to tell you, uh, the long and short of it is, um, is I recorded some voiceover and, uh, and have therefore uh, started editing the next show. And uh, I think at least in part, um, that was just sort of inspired by the fact that um, that I got that cool plaque uh, from uh, from YouTube, which, like I said, when I, you know, when I started my show, uh, you know, I didn't really know much of anything uh, about YouTube. It just seemed like a fun thing to do. Like I watched YouTube videos, like I watched classic game room, probably mostly classic game room, and uh, and just really liked it. But I, I also listened to a lot of gaming podcasts, and I thought, like, you know, I would like to try to do something like that. And, uh, and so I just started doing it, but I didn't know anything about it, you know? And then I, um, I started making YouTube videos and learning more about YouTube. And I found out about how like, oh, you know, if you get, if you get a hundred thousand subscribers, you get this silver play button. And you know what it's like? It's like if you're driving somewhere and you see somebody like driving a Lamborghini or something like that, like you can look at it, but you just know you're never going to have one. And, and you're not even like mad about it. It's just like, well, that's, you know. That's for them, not for me. Like, I'm not ever going to drive a Lamborghini. And so, like, you don't even worry about it. It's not like I see a Lamborghini and I get upset. It's just like, well, it's for, like, rich people or whatever, you know? And that's just how I felt about the silver play button. It was like 100,000 subscribers, please, you know? Because uh, my videos early on in the going, like, sucked. And so I just didn't spend any time even thinking, uh, get away from me, uh, even thinking about the possibility that someday I would get uh, that thing. And uh, then as my channel started to grow and it kind of became maybe more um, more of a possibility that that would happen, I just still kind of felt like, well, that's not why I'm making videos, so I don't really care. And um, but, you know, then in the last few months or whatever, uh, you know, when I was closing in on it, I got to say I got I got a little bit excited uh, at the idea of uh, of getting it. And it's funny because now I feel the exact same way. Uh, about the uh, gold play button that you get for uh, 500,000 subscribers. I just feel like, well, like I'm never going to get that. But it's like, you know, if there's one thing I should have learned by now, it's it's uh, just, you know, never say never. So uh, so we'll see. Um, I just go through a lot of periods of time where I just really don't have time to work on my show. And uh, it's incredibly frustrating. I don't understand. It seems like the older I get, the harder it is for me to find time to uh, to work on the show. And uh, I get really bummed out uh, watching channels like My Life in Gaming or Modern Vintage Gamer who are just killing it uh, because somehow they're, they're putting it in the work. Because both of those channels uh, very, you know, are very good shows with very high production value, uh, but they're putting out content regularly, and somehow I can't seem to do that. Um, so that's just something I guess I got I to gotta try to work on somehow. Uh, anyway, sorry. I uh, let me let me um, pause because I saw uh, we got a ten dollar donation from Ryan Reinbold. Thank you very much, uh, sir. I appreciate that. Um, and we also got uh, buck ninety nine from the math guy. Uh, you know, if you don't mind, math guy, I'd really I'm very curious to know why you're the math guy. And I only ask that because I like math. And so if you're like a math teacher, or I don't, do you have like a YouTube channel where you do like math tutoring? Uh, either way, that's very cool. Uh, I used to be a math tutor, actually. That's how uh, that was a job that I had when uh, I was in community college. Was uh, uh, I had an on-campus job being a um, uh, being a math tutor? Uh, I am Sai. Wants the difference between a YouTube chat stream and Discord. Hopefully, somebody uh, explained that to him. 
Um, Discord is something that you can be on or in all the time. Um, you can install a Discord app on your phone. Uh, you can install it on, uh, you, whether you have Android or an iPhone, you can put it on your iPad or an Android tablet. Uh, if you have a Mac or a PC, you can put the uh, the Discord app on there. Or if you're on a, a computer, you can just uh, use the website. You don't have to install anything if you don't want to. But it's basically just 24-7 uh, chat room for, uh, well, in, in my case, for Classic Gaming Quarterly. But you may find that uh, a lot of your favorite YouTube channels have a uh, Discord server. Like, uh, for sure, GameSack has one. And for sure, My Life in Gaming has one. Um, Friday Night Arcade has one that I'm a member of. Uh, I'm not a member of that many Discord servers, to be honest. Um, I'm a member of Smoke Monsters, but his is not public. Uh, anyway, all right, sorry. So I'm going to keep uh, scrolling down. Seems like everybody else explained that to him anyway, but um, but yeah. Uh, so, you know, if you want to uh, uh, join it, please do. And sorry, uh, Ryan says, Jumping Flash, also do a 3DO stream. Uh, I, so I almost actually did a 3DO stream tonight. Uh, I thought it would be cool, but uh, I ended up... Um, Deciding on the PlayStation, partially just to like the PlayStation and partially uh, just to kind of spite you know who. So, um, but yeah, I would definitely like to do uh, a 3DO stream. Uh, my 3DO is not um, RGB modded, but they they output uh, S video natively, and um, I can pass S video uh, into my uh, StarTech USB 3.0, whatever capture card. So, um, so it should be fine. And then Teresa says, God, this team sucks. Uh, does that mean the Wild aren't doing well? I, I hope not. I mean, I don't really care about the Wild, but uh, you guys do. So um, for your sakes, I hope that the Wild uh, does well. Anyway, uh, going back down, um, what do we got here? Oh, Teresa says, it's hard when you have a full-time job in a life. Uh, yeah, for sure. But I've always had a full-time job in a life, and I didn't seem to used to have these these problems. You know, part part of it, I think, is that I've kind of bitten off more than I could chew to a certain extent with YouTube. I mean, for sure, doing these live streams, uh, they take up my time. But, uh, you know, I at the same time, I also feel like I've been doing YouTube for, uh, I think, six years now. And I've kind of earned the right to have a little bit of fun. And these live streams are fun. And if it wasn't for the live stream, I wouldn't be playing PlayStation right now because I'd be working on the next episode of the show. And so this way I get to kind of decide. Like, I go pull down games off the shelf just because they're what I want to play because they'd be fun. So, um, so yeah. And then uh, we got another five bucks from DeForte, so uh, thanks, man. Uh, your content is way more important than high production video quality, in my opinion. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I appreciate that, but it, at the same time, I just have, um, uh, you know, I'm just kind of a, a stickler for uh, trying to at least have uh, high production quality, only because... Um, you know, when I see uh, YouTube channels that have low production quality, for me, that's kind of a pet peeve. So, um, so yeah. And then uh, M. Ray gave us 99 cents. Thanks, man. He says, YouTube is giving me some free super chats for being a YouTube premium member. That's cool. I didn't know that uh, YouTube did that. That's pretty awesome of them. So uh, thank you for uh, laying one of them on me. I appreciate it. And then Math Guy says he's a special ed math teacher in elementary school. Okay, cool. So you are a math guy. Uh, literally, you know, if you're already a math teacher, you might, you know, you might give a shot to, uh, doing YouTube math videos. Uh, who knows? Um, I don't know if you guys remember, I mean, I know most of you haven't watched it, but I mean, Teresa's here and she watched it. The, um, NHL 94 video that I did. Oh yeah. Sorry. Hold on. Let me, yeah. Uh, in the NHL 94 video, uh, that I did, I talked about Amory Wong, who uh, I actually got to interview uh, for that video, and because uh, he was the programmer of the Super Nintendo version of NHL '94, you know he's not a game programmer anymore. He's a high school math teacher uh, in Canada somewhere. I forgot where. And uh, he actually has a YouTube channel, but uh, I think he just puts up videos for his own students. But uh, I found it because I think I was just searching for his name because I think his YouTube channel is just called Amory Wong or whatever. And, uh, I don't know. I, I kind of get a kick out of watching those. So John Stover says best cl level clear sound, uh, bite ever. So thanks, man. Yeah. Uh, that, that was the consensus during the secret stream, uh, was that this, uh, was a massive improvement, uh, to the, uh, audio quality for the show. So, um, so that's good. Uh, okay. Oh, sorry. One more forum tattoo, dude, longtime viewer, first time caller. Yeah. 
Uh, thank you for being my nightly YouTube. Uh, no, thank you for, for telling me that. Um, yeah, it's funny. I got, so somebody else emailed me the other day. Uh, it's funny. So a lot of people tell me this. They'll tell me that, uh, it, so they'll tell me they use my show to, to help put them to sleep. And they always kind of say it with a certain amount of trepidation because um, I think they're afraid that I'm going to take it as an insult or something. Which I can understand why somebody would think that. Here I can start this. I don't know what I don't know where I'm supposed to go. I'm kind of lost. Uh, so we might it might be time to switch games anyway. We've been playing this one for a while, but um, I can see where somebody might think that uh, that someone like me would take that as an insult. Like, oh, what are you saying? I'm boring or something? But uh, you know, I have a couple of YouTube channels. Well, really one that I mainly use. Um, that like if I can't sleep, uh, I will watch uh, one of those one of the videos off of that channel, not because it's boring or anything, but just because the person, uh, you know, the host or whatever you want to call it, just has sort of a soothing voice and a calm demeanor and is also talking about something that I think is interesting. And uh, if I can't fall asleep, that's like my instant go-to. Like instead of, you know, like Ambien or something, um, you know, I just put on one of his videos. And uh, the fact that people use my show for that uh, for me, actually, is a really big deal in a cool way, because I think that it's also, and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to get all uh, mushy or anything, but I feel like that's a very personal thing. If you are, you know, going to use somebody's channel as sort of a sleep aid or something, um, so that it's not something I take lightly. I, that actually means a lot to me, and so uh, I, that's why, for that reason, it's anytime somebody tells me like, "Oh, I hope you don't take this." As an insult, it's like, no, dude, I don't take it as an insult at all. Did we ever go up here and go through this room? Maybe that's where... Oh, no, we didn't. I will not freeze. See, there's all these, like, gigantic gun turrets in these rooms that are just waiting to murder you. Hey, damn it. I just really want to try to get to the end of the, the at least one level. I just haven't played this game in like a really, really long time. This was a game that I never knew about. And then I went over, I was over at my buddy Anthony's house one day and he's like, oh, have you ever played this game? Loaded and he showed it to me. And, um, and I just thought it was really cool. Uh, that's the same for those of you who are like super fans of the show. Uh, that's the same Anthony that used to have the Retro Blast uh, podcast. Who I haven't actually talked to in kind of a while. Uh, I'm still kind of bummed out that uh, he stopped his show. But uh, as I think I've mentioned before uh, on a live stream, uh, he is now doing a, a YouTube series on uh, virtual reality gaming. So, um, so I guess that's taken up all of his time. But it seems like he's having a little bit of success with that. So, um, so good for him. I hope we're going the right way here. Because oh, that's a thing that's bouncing. It probably doesn't help them trying to play this game on a tiny capture screen, but um, but that's certainly not the reason uh, in total that uh, that I'm having problems here. Don't skip a room. This definitely strikes me. Here's, here's a phrase I haven't used in a while. Uh, this game definitely strikes me as more of a weekend rental type of game, uh, but like a good one. Uh, it's funny. You know, obviously I get a lot of heat from people for using that phrase. And as I've said before, I think if, if, if you don't like that I say that, then you didn't grow up in the area, uh, in the era of uh, video game rentals. Um, Cause I mean, it's, it's definitely not meant in any way as an insult. It's just that some games, uh, have enough entertainment value that uh, hopefully we get another continue. Yeah, uh, I wonder if you just get unlimited continues. Um, you know, like a like a role playing game or something, something that either has like a lot of replay value or just takes a long time to beat the first time through um, is totally worth buying. But you know, sometimes you know you'd go to the rental store and um, you know, as I've, I think I've, I think I've told a variation of. of this, you know, multiple times, but you know, you'd get to the rental store and the the A-list games were like gone. And oh, you butthole. 
And so you were you were going to end up coming home with something that you had maybe never heard of. And, you know, sometimes you got lucky and um, you ended up discovering a cool new game you didn't know about. And sometimes you got unlucky and, you know, came home with hot garbage. Let me pause it again. And because um, I know a lot of stuff um, has scrolled by. Um Oh, here we go. All right. Uh, Ryan says we need another let's read. Uh, yeah, I would like to do another let's read. I was kind of disappointed in how the last let's read did. But um, I'm also kind of not surprised. Uh, you know, that was the uh, Atari Age magazine let's read. I was kind of hoping maybe it would bring, like, some new people uh, to the channel, like people, maybe older people that are more into, like, the classic era of gaming. And uh, it doesn't seem to have done that. I think that video still has not cleared 10,000 views, which for um, for me, for uh, Let's Read, is is really bad. And um, certainly that's not going to stop me from making more. But uh, I, right now I'm just kind of focused on um, getting uh, the next two videos done, You know, one of which is a launch video and one of which isn't. And, uh, and then I have the uh, you know, game, game Pro Celebrity Gamers um, Let's Read to do. And I think that's part of the problem is, uh, you know, that Atari Age Let's Read really didn't do that well, like I said. And um, I already kind of promised uh, the person that lent me the magazine that the Game Pro Celebrity Gamers uh, magazine was going to be the next Let's Read that I did. But I'm also very nervous about uploading back-to-back -back videos to my channel that don't do well. Um, just because, you know, every time I upload a launch or a, a Let's Read, I lose subscribers. Not a lot, but, you know, and I know I shouldn't care, but I kind of do. But uh, I also do worry about my standing with the algorithm because I always kind of feel like I'm already on thin ice with the YouTube algorithm because I don't upload very often. So that worked. I don't like moving the microphone. So, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, De Forte says I do have a soothing voice. Um, yeah, hopefully, usually, unless I'm getting a little bit too excited. Uh, Brian Scanlon says there's a 24-hour YouTube video of the noise from the bridge of the Enterprise from Star Trek The Next Generation. Yeah, I think I've seen that before. Uh, I like that. I mean, that's for somebody that wants that kind of noise to fall asleep too. That's definitely cool. Like someone that buys like a sound machine and wants the sound of like the forest or of ocean waves or something. For me, it's just like, I would rather watch, like I said, somebody who is just sort of very calmly talking about uh, whatever, like in my case, I mean, it's not a secret. So the channel that I like uh, for that is uh, V West Life. Uh, v West Life is actually my favorite YouTube channel, uh, which uh, nobody ever asked me that, but if you did ask me, I would tell you that V West Life is my absolute favorite YouTube channel, and um, he does like similar things to what I just did with the Tandy One Thousand video. He does a lot of that kind of stuff, or he'll just buy electronics at the at the thrift stores, or he'll get little radios from like the dollar store and just review them. But uh, I just like his demeanor a lot, and uh, he's very knowledgeable. And uh, yeah, so. So I prefer to watch something like that because some of those videos are kind of long. Well, not compared to what I make, but uh, I mean, that Tandy 1000 video was like over an hour long, right? And uh, which, I, so I kind of have mixed feelings about the Tandy 1000 video because I don't feel like it's doing that well. It's got like 1100 or 1200 views because uh, now it's like a day and a half old. But I also noticed that my subscribers kind of went up faster. So I wonder if that actually is bringing some new uh, viewers to this channel, which would be kind of cool. Uh, I guess. But anyway, he'll do like a 20 or 25 minute video talking about like he's done one about his Tandy 1000 or just about some other computer. And so I can just sit there, you know, he's calmly, you know, talking to you about some Gateway 2000 computer from like 1997 or something. And like I can just nod off um, listening to him talk about that kind of stuff. Um, Recluse says, I've never watched live before. I'm also a person who uses your videos for sleep. That's awesome. And for entertainment, I watch LGR for sleep too. Yeah, LGR is also, he has that same kind of demeanor. Um, so yeah, that I could totally see where somebody would do that. Like Clint's a super cool guy too. Uh, B Garnet, BB Garnet, excuse me. I love the sound of IBM keyboards, the real clicky ones. As a kid, I would call all the video updates and ask for a game was available just to, just to hear the keyboard. That's funny. Um, yeah, like the, the keyboard I have in here uses uh, clicky keys. This is not an IBM Model M, but I do have an IBM Model M down here that I use with my other DOS machine. And um, I definitely love the sound of those, but at the same time, it's something that, like, you'd only use that at work if you really hated your coworkers. Like, I actually have an extra. Um, the, the keyboard that I use here is um, 
Uh, it it's just like an Amazon keyboard that has like knockoff Cherry MX Blue uh, clicky key switches in it. But uh, I have two of them because when I bought one, I I bought the one that didn't light up because I'm like keyboards that light up are stupid. And uh, and then I got it down here in the basement and realized that I couldn't really see the keys very well. And so I I learned that the only thing that's stupid is me. And um, but by then I had had the keyboard too long to return it. And so I bought the exact same keyboard, except that it's the light up version. So now I have the other one. So I should take it to work and use it on my work uh, computer and just make all of my uh, coworkers hate me. So. Uh, yeah, oh, I am size says, yeah, you don't show a lot of gameplay on the screen, so not much flashing. Yeah, that's true, because that is uh, like even on the lowest setting or the dimmest setting, an iPad is too bright. And especially if there's gameplay and it's flashing, it's like I have to close it or, or I wish you could easily turn the screen off on an iPad and just have the the sound. Because if I close the cover, it automatically turns it off. So I guess the only thing you can do is um, is flip it around. Uh, sorry, I'm still trying to uh, scroll down. I am size says also discussing things that mean a lot to people makes sense. People might use it to calm themselves and fall asleep. Um, yeah, and uh, like I said, I just think it's really cool that um, that people do that. Yep, CGQ power couple. That's right. Oh, Derek has cheese. You guys have cheese curds in Wisconsin, so do you have poutine there? Oh. Teresa posted the yeah. I, I appreciate that you keep posting the link to the Discord. So that's um, that's cool. I feel like we keep getting new people joining the Discord, but none of them really hang out. Like we already have like the core who are like the Discord regulars, and even though we keep getting new people, uh, they don't really stick around. Which is, I, I mean, I don't know. It, it's fine, but um, you know, it'd be cool if um, more people hung out. But um, yeah. Uh, we got 15 bucks from uh, Creative Assassin, uh, showing my love and support, even though I'm not much of a PlayStation fan. I'm a fan of you and everything you do. Thank you for your hard work. Well, thanks, man. I really appreciate that. And I'm sorry you're not a fan of the PlayStation. It's such a cool system. Um, sorry, I'm, I feel like I'm falling behind over here. Um, I just hate missing when people are um, trying to tell me something and I miss it. I always, I always feel bad whenever I go rewatch a stream and I realize somebody asked me a question and I missed it. I always just, I feel bad. Like I, like, I don't know. I, I take it personally somehow. Like, I, I don't know. Like I, yeah, I don't know. I feel, I always feel like, Oh, that guy didn't even answer my question. And it's not, it's not on purpose. I would never, unless it was a troll, I would never just let a question or something go by and, uh, and ignore it. So and, uh, oh, Derek, four bucks from Derek. Thanks, Derek. Panzer General, I know you have that in the long box. That's true, I do. I'm not sure how entertaining uh, Panzer General would be uh, to watch on a live stream. And, and it, at, at the very least, it's not a pick up and play kind of game. That would have to be like, tonight we're playing Panzer General and like, that's it. So, um, so I'm not saying no, but I'm saying no tonight, I guess. Um, and somebody said, I saw one company makes Model M keyboards and the original molds with springs. Yeah. Uh, you can't justify a hundred bucks for a keyboard. I hear that. I mean, you can spend a lot of money these days on a keyboard. This one that I use was like 40 bucks or 50 bucks. Uh, and even then I was like, I don't really want to spend 50 bucks on a keyboard. But, um, like I said, I learned the hard way that you kind of, at least down here in the basement where it's really not very bright, um, having a, a keyboard that lights up is kind of mission critical. And it's cool because you can set the color, and then I have my new mouse. I have one of these Logitech. Uh, it's like a, it's a gaming mouse, but I just got it because I really like having the high DPI mouse, and it's an it has an RGB light in it, so I have them both lit up blue. Uh, anyway, uh, oh Ryan's taken off. Well, I probably missed him already, but uh, but anyway, thanks a lot for uh, stopping by there, Ryan. Uh, Bob Vila asks about poutine. I don't know what your question is. Oh, is, is he asking about? I know Bob Vila knows what poutine is. Oh, he's just excited about poutine. Yeah, man, I love that stuff. Uh, I definitely, um, I definitely ate quite a bit of poutine while I was up in Vancouver, which I know is not the best place to get poutine, but at least they have it. You can't get it here at all. So, um, so yeah. And Derek says you make me wish I didn't give Bithead the first wizardry just so I could play it myself. Well, I mean, is it expensive, or couldn't you just go pick it up? 
Oh, good. I'm finally caught up. Thank goodness. Are chili cheese fries considered poutine? Well, I mean, you know, you could say they're a very... I don't know. That's You can get into some heated discussions about that. Like, I went to this one restaurant in uh, Vancouver that sells nothing but poutine, but it's all these different kind. Like, you can get all these different toppings. Like, one of them is just traditional poutine, but uh, they also had all these other ones with... with stuff on them and you go read reviews on Yelp of that place and some people would say that like it's really good which I mean at least I think it is uh, I mean I, I enjoyed it anyway but then you get other people who are like these poutine purists who are like you know if it has anything but gravy and cheese curds it is not poutine which you know okay but um, so what I'm saying I guess is that uh, depending on who you talk to you know, maybe chili cheese fries could be considered sort of a variation of poutine. I don't really know. It's like the same kind of argument of like uh, asking, you know, is chili a soup or is uh, is a hot dog a sandwich? God, I feel like we've been playing this game forever. But I think now that we got the red key card, we got to go down here somewhere. I, I just, I don't know why I'm all fixated on it. I just really want to get to the end of the level. Just, just to say we freaking accomplished something tonight. Wait, why were there people in there? Oh my god. Oh, now we can get into these doors. That's one. Whoops. Oh, okay. It's funny, you can shoot the beds and they blow up. I was only shooting them because, like, I don't know, maybe, you, maybe there's something hiding under them or something. Sorry, I just I saw it scroll by real fast that McDonald's in New England has lobster rolls. Uh, that sounds pretty awesome. All right, how do we get? We need to get back there. But I don't know how to do that. Wasn't this game on Saturn as well? I think I think it was. Do I have College Slam? Uh, no. McDonald's in Canada used to have poutine. Uh, yeah, I've heard that. Well, that thing was a lot easier to destroy than I thought it would be. Um, all right. You know what? I, I know I said we're going to get to the end of the level. I, I'm not really sure where to go. I just feel like we've been playing this game uh, for kind of a while. And we have a, a stack of great games over here, and I want to check out some of the other ones. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch the game. Uh, it is already uh, 7 o'clock. So, I mean, we got, you know, half hour, an hour left of the stream. So... And uh, I just in case Teresa is uh, is wondering, it is still light out here, so it's not time to put the. I, w I don't need to put the the. I don't need to lock up the chicken coop until, uh, probably until the stream is over. Really. Um, all right. So we played. I just want to set aside the game. Oh, oh, I already did. Okay, set that aside. Okay, so I got uh, someone saying Need for Speed. I know somebody else wanted to play um, Wipeout. Let's throw in some Need for Speed only because I don't think it's going to. Um, take very long and uh no mike you have not missed out on uh on es uh espn extreme games yet john asked do you harvest the eggs from the chickens yeah of course um that's i would say that's the point for having them but i mean they're kind of pets to be honest but um but yeah i mean we we get their eggs and we eat them and they're delicious
Uh, I guess the only thing... Do I need to worry about... If we play Road Rash, am I going to have to worry about the soundtrack? Do I care? I don't know. I mean, I don't... It's not like I make a lot of ad revenue off of these live streams anyway. As long as I don't... I'm just worried about getting in trouble because I know sometimes people get in trouble uh, on these live streams and the way YouTube handles that is they give you like a 30-day live stream ban. Uh, are there leashes for the chickens? Uh, I'm not saying that there's not such a thing as um, chicken leashes, uh, but I would not uh, I would not use one. Andrew asked, did you catch the Australian F1 race at all? Chris, of course. I watched the whole thing. Um it's not so bad because, you know, here where I live, uh, the race was on at 10 p.m., which uh, I wish that was always the case, to be honest. Uh, sometimes races are on here at like 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning, which on a Sunday is a little bit early for me to be getting up. But uh, I find the older that I am, actually, the, the earlier I get up. So hopefully it'll be less and less of a problem. Do we want to watch the intro? It'd be kind of cool to check out. I'm going to turn the volume up. I love this mixer. I guess that was it. So that's funny. Tahid says, pick the Porsche. Duh. Didn't they, Teresa says, and all of a sudden Kit breaks into the end. Didn't they make a, um, a Knight Rider game? Or am I confusing it with something else? Like, I mean, I don't mean like way, way back in the day. I thought they made a Knight Rider game for one of the sort of semi uh, newer systems. Uh, I'm going to do time trial first only because I haven't played this game in a really, really long time. I just want to kind of get a feel for it again. Uh, and then we can try, um, we can try a, a race. Ooh, Autumn Valley. That sounds good. Quick two laps, midday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all fine. Ooh, Toyota Supra. That's pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously we're going for the Porsche. Whoa. Well, I guess you're just a damn kid. So, yeah, uh, Creative says he's never seen Knight Rider. But, uh, I mean, I don't... You know, I love Knight Rider because I grew up, you know, or I watched it when I was a kid. But um, I'm honestly kind of not sure if you were someone that didn't grow up with that and you go try to watch it now. Um I'm trying to figure out. Ooh, that's not the right way to go. Sorry, we're struggle busting it today. Where's the freaking gas? Oh, here we go. All right. Uh, you know, if you if you, I mean, I don't know. It's just there was like a, a a certain level of cheese to like these '80s drama prime, you know, prime time drama shows that we don't really have anymore. And so I just wonder if somebody goes back now, you know, like a as much as I don't like the term is like like a millennial goes now now and tries to watch uh you know Miami Vice or well, maybe that's not a good example maybe that's a good show Miami Vice. But uh like goes and tries to watch uh whoa um tries to watch like the A team or Night Rider like would it really be that good? Uh I don't know. You know, because, you know, it's basically what you're saying is like, OK, could you would it, would one of those shows uh, in this day and age still be enjoyable to watch when you don't have any nostalgia for it uh, whatsoever? I got to say, this game is better than I remembered, like for being such an early game, it's pretty solid. It even looks pretty good, I think. Ooh, we're going to die. Oh, 
Oh, Airwolf, Derek says. Yeah, I mean, I want to go back and watch some Airwolf, you know, because, um, you know, I don't, is it Jan Michael Vincent or do you say Jan Michael Vincent? Either way, he died. And um, I used to be a big Airwolf fan uh, when I was a kid. I remember we used to play Airwolf. Like, you know, you know, I don't mean like a video game, but you remember like when we were kids, like you'd go outside and like, you know, I like at during the lunch break in elementary school, like we would go outside and like play transformers, but like each one of us would just like be a transformer, you know, or, or, uh, uh, or like I said, we would play airwolf, you know, and we would be like running around, uh, you know, in just on the field or whatever at lunch, just like pretending that we were like airwolf, you know, and we would be like singing the airwolf theme song or whatever while we did it. But, uh, but yeah, I don't know. Could you go watch like, like a, a, a show like Airwolf now and think that it was good. Or, I mean, there were just like tons of shows that were kind of like that uh, in the 80s. Uh, and some of them, you know, were were more successful than others. Like, like if someone goes now and watches like, you know, Remington Steel or The Falcon and the Snowman, like, uh, is that still good at all? I, I, don't, I don't know. I just feel like people's standards have changed so much for like primetime network dramas. Um you know, stuff like uh, um, like the Law and Order and CSI and stuff like that, where it's sort of, it's a lot more realistic, but, oh, yeah, Hardcastle and McCormick. Um, stuff like that where, you know, it's one of the ways in which I feel like people have kind of lost their innocence, like society as a whole. Like, you know, we used to have, uh, you know, shows like that that were sort of cheesy because, like, they were trying to be dramatic without being so realistic that they were graphic. And now you watch stuff like, you know, like Law and Order, criminal or not criminal, like Law and Order Special Victims Unit, like some of that stuff is like really messed up. Like it, I feel like in the '80s it would have been an R-rated movie, and now it's just on TV at like 8 p.m. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna scroll back up real quick. Uh, oh well, yeah, Duke, Dukes of Hazard is also that's another good example. Um, I love the Dukes of Hazard, but um, but yeah, same thing. And uh, suddenly, uh, where are we here? Uh, oh, Wally Lama, as a Porsche guy, do you like uh, RWBs? Those are those, those uh, Rauvelt. Uh, no, I actually hate them. I, I, I don't hate them, but uh, I don't like that look where it, it like the panels are like rivet up in the stream there. It says reconnection successful. Uh, I don't know why that happened, but uh, I don't know. What are you going to do? Uh, I don't like Singer interiors, but uh, as far as the exterior goes, uh, they're pretty awesome. And I think they use. Or at least they have used engines from uh, Williams Engineering, which is also pretty cool. Um, oh, Jameson has chickens. You have a Leghorn and an Americana and a Rhode Island Red. I used to have a Rhode Island Red. Uh, her name was Big Red. We had two. We had Big Red and Ruby. Uh, Big Red was just the bigger one, and Ruby was the smaller one. Uh, we have a Leghorn uh, right now. Her name is Turbo. And, uh, and then we have two Buff Warpingtons. Uh, Rockman says, you think Knight Rider holds up well? Uh, that's cool. I haven't watched, I actually have the first season of Knight Rider on DVD, but, uh, I haven't popped it in. Um, I should. Yan Can Cook. Yeah, we, we were talking about it the other day, but, uh, Yan Can Cook, that guy, Martin Yan, uh, he went to the same college that I went to and he gave the commencement address at my wife's graduation, which was pretty neat. Like I didn't get anybody cool. We graduated at the same time. But we were we went to the same university but different colleges, if that makes sense. Um, and so she had Martin Yan give the commencement address, and we didn't have anybody. So um, that was kind of crappy. But I mean, obviously, I went to her graduation, so I got to see the guy talk, and that was pretty cool. Um, okay, hopefully the stream wasn't dead uh, for too long. I see you guys noticed that, but um, it's back now, so uh, so that's very cool. Uh, oh, D Forte went back and watched the archive and saw the new audio setup. So thanks, man, and another five bucks. So thank you very much. Like I said, that's this is the kind of thing that that uh, that kind of stuff uh, pays for. Um, this past summer we binged Chips. Yeah, they I think they stopped, but for a while there was a local channel here that was showing reruns of Chips at like five p.m. So I was like making sure I made it home in time to watch Chips because I used to watch Chips when I was a kid too. And, uh, I don't know. I, I kind of think that one, uh, still holds up pretty good. Uh, oh, Clay says, which DVD, the universal release is pretty rough. I honestly don't know. I'd have to go look. I think I found, I got it at like a used DVD store. 
Um, so yeah, maybe it does suck. Uh, I don't really know. I just, um, I have, um, oh yeah, Night Court is the bomb. Um, I just, uh, you know, I try to pick up like DVD sets of, um, like old, like seasons of old TV shows where TV was still an SD and was 4.3. Uh, cause then I have a, um, I have like a pretty nice DVD player, uh, upstairs in the room where I do my editing, uh, hooked up to a little Sony PVM or, well, no, it was now it's hooked up to my Commodore 1702. And then sometimes while I'm sitting there, if I'm doing like show research or especially if I'm just recording gameplay footage, uh, I'll, I'll have like, you know, the American gladiators on or, or, you know, Star Trek or Roseanne or, or whatever. Oh, Bones Jackson is coming in here with a WKRP in Cincinnati reference. As God is my witness, I thought turkeys could fly. Uh, that was a good episode. Anyway, all right. Uh, so let's try actually doing a race now. Uh, we already did Autumn Valley. Do we want to really do that one again? Or wait, no, we have to go back. Don't we? Because I want to do an actual race. Here we go. All right, so single race. I feel like the audio is too quiet. Uh, okay, so single race. We did Autumn Valley, so let's do something different. Vertigo Ridge. City? That just seems like a straight line. Ooh, coastal. Uh, yeah, sounds good to me. And then uh, we're going to stay in the Porsche. Uh, hopefully everybody understands. Oh, you can pick your opponents. Uh, Supra. Yeah. Quantum Leap. I used to watch Quantum Leap a little bit. Uh, for some reason, I didn't watch it that much. I don't know why. It, it was like there was this... You know why? I'll tell you why. Because when... Uh, you know, we talked about on um, Flashback... When uh, I, I quit living with my dad and went back to living with my mom. Uh, and that would have been uh, right before sixth grade started. Um, my mom was just really not into watching TV. Like music was more th like in our living room was a stereo. Um, uh, not a TV. Like the TV was in my mom's bedroom. But, uh, you know, it had kind of an open floor plan. Uh so that like the kitchen and the dining area and like the living room were kind of like one big room a little bit. And that was mostly where we hung out, you know, because my mom used to when I was a, a like an elementary school and junior high, my mom actually used to cook a lot, which was in stark contrast to like when I once we moved in with my grandma and I was in high school, she didn't really cook at all anymore. And I was kind of on my own. Now I feel like it's too loud. Um. But anyway, we'd always be out there and um, we'd always have music playing. And it was kind of around that time that shows like uh, Quantum Leap and MacGyver were kind of at the peak of their popularity. And I ended up just sort of missing out on those shows because we just didn't watch a lot of TV. But like I didn't feel like I was missing out on anything because instead it was like we were listening to music and talking and doing stuff together. You know, or I was playing some Nintendo, but, um, you know, as I've kind of talked about before, at, at least for me, like, like with me and Jonathan or my other friends at that time, like as much as Nintendo was a big deal, it was also kind of like just another toy. And so we didn't spend all of our time. Oh, man. Uh, we didn't spend all of our time playing Nintendo. And uh, like we used to do a lot of like creative stuff, like, you know, building things or, you know, drawing or painting or. Uh, you know, my mom was an artist at that time, too, so that kind of helped that we did a lot of that kind of stuff. And so, anyway, uh, for that reason, like, a lot of the, like, late 80s TV shows, uh, be it drama shows or sitcoms, uh, I just didn't really watch. Uh, which is funny, because then, again, once we moved in with my grandma, and, um, you know, things kind of changed with my mom quite a bit, uh, I actually turned into, like, a TV junkie. And I watched, like, hours of TV uh, every single day. So I have a lot more of a... Like, my main TV-related nostalgia is either, like, earlier in elementary school 
when I was still living with my dad or like high school. Cause like when I was living with my dad and my stepmom, I think it was more of a, like, I don't know, is that normal? Like, you know, every night we watch TV, like we would sit down, we would have dinner in the living room or whatever. And then we would have like TV, like family TV time where we would watch like whatever the primetime shows were, or, you know, maybe my, my dad would come home from the, the video store um, with a movie that he had rented and we would watch that. Um, so, yeah, so I, I watched more TV during that time, you know, like things like Murder, She Wrote. Magnet, like Magnum PI, that's another show, like for some reason, like, like I think Magnum PI is a cool show. I just didn't watch it uh, when I was a kid. Same thing with Miami Vice. Um, so anyway, I don't, do we need to play more Need for Speed? Um, that was fun. This game is really cool. Uh, so I, I'm not saying I want to take it out uh, just because it's not good or anything, but um, I would like to play at least one more game and now it's 7.15. So, um, so yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and pop it out and uh, we'll put something else in, so. Uh, time, so, well, Time Crisis is not a long box game, so uh, if for no other reason we can't play uh, Time Crisis tonight, but um, I'm not sure if I have, I have to go look. I, I definitely have a gun con, which is the important part, uh, if I don't have Time Crisis, I have a modded PlayStation, so I mean, I could just um, download it. Wow, this this copy is like completely complete. I've got I've got the piece of foam, and uh, I've got what is this? Oh wow, check this out! It's got an, an EGM uh, subscription thing in it. Free video game magazine. You've scored the best games for your next generation system. Now get the magazine that lets you get the most of your games for free. Oh, I see. You you buy an you buy a subscription to EGM, and then you get a second three free three issue subscription to uh did you guys know there was a magazine called Cyber Sports? That'd be kind of cool to check out, actually. And then there was a magazine called PSX. Anyway. Uh, and then, uh, there's an electronic arts registration card and then, and then the manual, but, uh, like it comes with, I assume everything originally came with. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, nobody cares. So, um, I don't know. Is, is Mike McFly still around? Cause he was asking about, uh, ESPN extreme games. Oh yeah, there you are. All right. We're going to play ESPN extreme games specifically for Mike. Yeah. What up? Ooh, this game's got such a bad scratch in it, but it plays, so whatever. Well, hopefully it plays. I don't remember when I did the launch episode, I don't remember if um, if I had a legit copy of the game or if at that time I was just playing with a burn game. So, um, so we'll see. Magnum PI is why I bought a Doberman as an adult. Wow. Well, hey, Magnum PI is why I want a Ferrari. That's not true, but... Um, and actually, I kind of don't want a Ferrari, but I mean, I would take one, mind you. What kind of show is Columbo? Wow. Although that's another one. I, I never watched Columbo. I just, I know, I know about it or whatever, but, um, and I think I actually would like to watch it. If I could fit in a 308, I'd have that too. Well, I could just, you know, I could never imagine having a car like a Ferrari or something. Because even just with my car, like I, I, I'm so neurotic about parking it because like I don't want to park it. You know, like you'll, I'll pull into a parking spot and then kind of look and like, well, these cars are a little bit too close and I don't want to get a door ding. Oh, this is under a tree. I don't want to get bird poo or a branch falling out. And, you know, and my car really wasn't very expensive, uh, honestly. And so I can't even imagine, you know, having something like a like a Ferrari or something. I would go crazy. Dude, Rockford Files was a good show. Like, uh, when I was a kid, my mom, that was a show that she would watch. 
like I know I said that my wife, uh, my wife, ooh, that's a bad Freudian slip. I know I said that my mom didn't watch much TV, but one thing she would watch, like I think it was Saturday afternoons maybe or Saturday evenings when I was a kid. Um, they would, uh, let's see, one player exhibition. I'm going to do easy, you know, make your jokes. Um, anyway, uh, Saturday afternoons, they would show reruns of the original series of Star Trek and Rockford Files, and my mom would watch both uh, just because she was uh, really into those. So uh, I'm not going to, well, am I actually, hold on, equipment selection, because we want to be rollerblades, uh, right, because um, cause we're playing this for Mike. Uh, anyways, she really liked the original Star Trek and she liked the Rockford Files. So I used to watch both, uh, with her sometimes. Uh, I'm not going to change, um, the course. San Francisco, so that's already a good one. Oh, Erin Gray, man. She was beautiful. Oh, Mike, Mike McFly is coming with the facts. Not loud enough. Still not loud. That's a problem. I have to like pause it and then turn it up and then see how it is. I need like anybody want to like move to California and like be my unpaid audio engineer? Ouch, man. Goodness. I think I mentioned this on a, on a previous live stream, but uh, um. I have stuff to do for uh, multiple unpaid interns. Ouch, man. I haven't, I'm trying to remind myself of the controls. I haven't played this one in a while. Oh, man, you can punch and kick. See, it's still too quiet. Some games are, like, much um, louder than others. Yeah, he has a helmet, Mike, exactly. Something to think about. Oh. Is there a is there a jump button? Oh, yeah, there is. You're supposed to if you go through the green gates, I think you get money. Yeah. Cuz you can uh upgrade your equipment if I remember correctly. Uh, I think I literally have not played this game since I made the PlayStation launch episode, which was like, what, three or four years ago? Or, I mean, I don't even remember. Oh, Dickinson, you have a you have a Nissan Skyline. Uh, this the lady I work with, like I share I share an office with these two women, and uh, one of them she's she's a little bit of a gearhead. Like she also collects Hot Wheels, like I do. I mean, you know, sort of collects Hot Wheels. Like we don't. Neither one of us has very many, but uh, it's funny because she just got uh, I forgot what year, but she just got a Nissan Skyline uh, Hot Wheel because she, she was telling me. Like, anytime either one of us gets a new Hot Wheel, you know, we'll tell each other about it at work or maybe take a picture or something. And uh, she likes the skyline. So, oh, take that. Uh, and so she was excited that she just got that. Oh, the carnage. Oh, we're going to die. Derek wants a GTO or a Chevelle. 
go for the GTO. Although, I mean, either one of those is cool. And then, sorry, uh, I saw we got another donation from DeForte. Uh, thanks, man. Unpaid intern fund. I don't think you understand uh, how unpaid interns work. Uh, I'm going to keep your money and not pay the intern. Um, I can't remember if I... I think I told the story on the secret live stream, so I don't... I think. If not... You know, it's funny. One of my, like... Happened again. Uh, one of my biggest fears now at this point is that I'm going to start telling the same stories over and over again. Uh, whether it's on a live stream or on uh, an episode of Flashback. Like, part of the reason that I haven't made the next episode of Flashback is I want to go back and watch the last two episodes uh, to make sure that I don't tell the same story again. Because I think... You know, because what happens is I spend a lot of time just in my head thinking about stories that I want to tell on flashback. But then after a while, it's like, okay, did I did I tell that story or did I just think about telling that story? Uh, and now I forgot the story. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so when I went to, I don't know when that was, like six months ago or something? Or, oh God, I don't remember. Uh, when I went to San Francisco and sort of had like that joint fan meetup with uh, Corey and Troy from My Life in Gaming, uh, I ended up meeting this guy uh, who came out just to meet, well, probably not to meet me, let's be honest, but um, uh, he's like the the digital, what do you, I don't know what you call it, like uh, digital media manager, like digital asset manager, that's what he was called. The Oh! The digital asset manager for, I don't want to say what company, I mean, for a big company, like a, a website. And, uh, and, um, and I was kind of talking to him because I was like, well, what does that even mean? You know? And so he was telling me what that means to be a digital asset manager. And I was just saying like, man, that's what I need because I have so much, uh, I have so much digital media on my editing computer because I don't ever get rid of, uh, of anything. Like after I do, uh, like a launch episode or anything like that, you know, I end up like, I record a lot of gameplay footage. I download, ouch. Uh, I download lots and lots of images, like, you know, magazine scans or just other types of pictures, uh, you know, box art. I download commercials. Like I, I mean, I have tons and tons and tons of stuff. And uh, and then when it's over, I don't get rid of any of it, but I also don't really have time to go through there and sort it and, like, add. Come on, man. What are you doing? And add metadata and whatnot. So, like, I, I have, like, this, you know... Uh, extra hard drive in my computer that um that has all that stuff on it and some of it sorted out into folders like it'll be like oh this is for magazine scans or this is uh you know video game advertisements or this is for you know video commercials etc 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 and but then there's a video uh, there's a folder called unsorted which is far bigger than any of the other folders because usually what happens is after a video is over i just dump it all into unsorted and then sometimes when I'm bored or something, um, uh, I'll actually go through and sort some of it out. Uh, I already screwed it up, whatever. Um, so yeah, I need, I need like a, um, I need an unpaid intern. Uh, oh, cause I told him that and he's like, oh man, you know, they have like, he was telling me how at like San Jose state, they have like academic programs for like, um. Do I have to keep playing, uh, Mike, or was that did that scratch your ESPN Extreme Games itch? Um, we could play one more track. I, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I had, I sucked, but I kind of had fun, so um, uh, I'll do one more. Uh, he was saying that you know you could, uh, I could get like somebody who's like an undergraduate um, student at uh, in one of these programs at San Jose State who would not only want to help me with that, but be, but be like excited about it. Cause they could like do it for like, you know, college credit. And then, you know, I guess get to say that they worked on some YouTube channel. Like to me, it's like, you know, what do you want to work on my YouTube channel for? But, uh, Ooh, Utah is a cool one. All right. We're going to do Utah, but we're going to do Utah uh, on a mountain bike just cause I think that, um, kind of makes more sense. And, uh, and then we're going to move on to, uh, there's no way, that we are ending this live stream and not playing Wipeout, uh, just because that just seems like a crime. Uh, anyway, all that being said, I'm, I'm never actually going to get uh, an intern just because I could never have somebody work for me and not pay them, and I can't really afford to pay anybody. So, I mean, I have microphone boom arms to to buy. 
Uh, oh, and Reed's bud. Thank, uh, thanks for stopping by, man. On your mark. Get set. Go. Yeah. Is this? I think this is very quiet again. And I feel like I just got airborne at a really bad time. I need the um, mixer closer somehow. But see, I was kind of enjoying the desk space that I got back by not having that dopey tripod here. Oh, dang it. Mess with me. Oops. It's just so funny playing this game and, and thinking about that um, PlayStation launch episode. I just... It's one of those episodes, it's like I someday I would love... I'll never do it, but... You know, someday I would just really love to redo the launch of the TurboGrafx-16 episode just because um, the gameplay footage looks so horrid because uh, it was recorded in S-Video. And uh, and honestly, I would love to redo the launch of the PlayStation episode just because it seems like I was so preoccupied with trying to sound like edgy. You know, and I remember, you know, because I was talking about this game, right? And I said that, you know, that, you know, this game reminds me a lot of Road Rash. You know, oops, missed that gate. And, and you know, I talked about how I thought Road Rash is one of the most overrated games ever, which, which you know, which is funny because what I was really talking about was the Genesis version of Road Rash, which I really don't... It's just... Uh, the frame rate is not great. I think the controls are sluggish. Uh, I think the, the 3DO slash PlayStation version of Road Rash is actually pretty good, but, but that wasn't even the point. You know, like, the point is that I was trying to be, like... Uh, uh, a little bit edgy or something. and I don't even really know why. Uh, I must have watched somebody else's video and thought like, oh, you're supposed to be edgy. Okay. Uh, and it's funny because every once in a while, somebody will actually leave a comment and kind of call me out on it and say like, you know, you're obviously just trying to like sound edgy. And I always hate it because it's just like, you know, the truth hurts or whatever, you know. Stupid rock. Uh, oh, hold on. I got I to gotta pause it because people are talking about 80s music. Um, Simple Minds. Yeah, Simple Minds is pretty good. Aha. Yeah. Aha is good. Um, but the the best Aha song is uh, is The Sun Always Shines on TV. Uh, you love that style about me? I don't know. I don't... I think... Oh, man. I think overall I try not to be... I try not to be very edgy, but only... I get here's the thing that bothers me about that is that's just not who I am. I was trying to be a certain way because I just thought like, oh, that's what you're supposed to do. Like, you know, if I say something now on the show that's like, you know, oh, unpopular opinion time or whatever, that's just me being honest. And it it was me being honest then too because I really, you know, what did I say in that video? I said um I said that Road Rash is overrated, which I believe, and I said that I would rather play the PlayStation version of Street Fighter the movie than uh, any Mortal Kombat game ever made. And that's also 100% true. But the point is, is that normally I wouldn't say something like that. And I only said it because I was just like, I guess I thought I was being funny. I don't know. And, and in retrospect, I just don't, I don't think it was funny. So... Oh, man. Now we have to wait for the... Oh, here we go. All right. Oh, when did I say that? Some people who like to repeat what other people say. I forgot when I said that, but that was a good line. At least in my opinion. You obviously never played Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Yeah, to be honest, I don't think I've played any Mortal Kombat after, well, I have Mortal Kombat 3. I've played that one a little bit. 
uh, long box game on the PlayStation here. And uh, I've played some Mortal Kombat Gold on uh, on the Dreamcast just because it's a launch game, so I have to. But, um, man, now that's going to drive me nuts. When did I say some people who like to repeat what other people say? Um... Anyway, sorry, I saw something else I wanted to respond to. Oh, yeah, uh, you agree you much prefer Street Fighter. Well, what's funny is that uh, people, I think, really confuse uh, Street Fighter the movie in the arcade with Street Fighter the movie on the PlayStation. Uh, In the arcade, Street Fighter the movie is a bad game. But the PlayStation version is not a port of the arcade game. Uh, It's actually, uh, where's the kit? Here it is. Uh, it's actually basically just a reskinned version of Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. So that's why it actually, you know, if you don't like the digitized graphics or the cutscenes, then then fine, uh, fair enough. But you really can't say that Street Fighter the movie for the PlayStation uh, doesn't have good gameplay. Uh, when you say that, all you're doing is revealing your own ignorance because obviously you've either never played it or you're not that good at fighting games because you don't realize that you're playing a good game with a crappy looking skin on top of it. So it's funny, I, I've i had a couple people, you know, kind of call me out on that video and be like, oh, you'd rather play this than that, you have bad taste because that game sucks. And I'll ask them, I'm like, oh, you think that game sucks? So does that mean that you think uh, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo sucks? Because it's the same game. And they never reply because it's like, oh. So, uh I don't know. I get a little bit of sick pleasure out of that, even though I really shouldn't care. Oh, sorry, by the way. Uh, we're popping uh, Wipeout in because this is probably going to be the last game of the night. Um, yeah, so stream. the stream's a little bit over two hours old now, so um, I want to at least kind of start winding things down. And I, I don't know how long I'm going to end up wanting to play um, Wipeout for. And uh, I guess I didn't mention this, but uh, so hopefully I think the video uh, quality looks pretty good. Um, hopefully you think so too. Uh, the PlayStation is one of those systems where there are many different, uh, you know, graphics modes, uh, used by the games. They're not all just like 320 by 240. There's a bunch of different ones. And so if you want to like really be picky, uh, about the video quality, uh, getting the timing set properly for the OSSC, you have to have a bunch of different, um, Uh, profiles that you use based on what game you're playing and uh i don't want to do that uh well hold on let's we should watch this this is gonna be some cool music Um, anyway, what what was I even saying? Oh, so I'm just using a generic 320 by 240, um, profile. So, uh, it could be that sometimes things don't, uh, don't look perfect. So, um, I am Sai asks, um, how the other two Wipeout games are. I think the second one, which is what Wipeout XL, uh, is, is really cool. And I mean, it helps if you play it with the, uh, Nedgecon controller. Uh, I'll just warn everybody now, I'm, I'm definitely not good at this game, especially with a standard controller, so I'm probably going to end up hitting the walls quite a bit. Uh, it's just a fun game to play. Uh, I'm certainly not going to be putting on a clinic uh, or anything. Um, you grew up with F-Zero. I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it's sort of a continuation of that of that genre for sure. Um, Kill Leak the DNA imperatively played tonight, mark my words. Yeah, I don't, uh, I didn't bring that one. Actually, I don't have that game. I'd have to play a burn copy. Uh, and then Teresa said that I'm, uh, breaking Derek's heart, um, not playing Panzer General. Uh, like I said, again, I'm not saying you couldn't check out, you know, at some point with these streams, we're going to have to start playing, uh, more esoteric games. Cause uh, you know, I've already, 
I'm playing so many of the marquee titles on these streams. And, um, you know, it would just be cool. It'd be cool to play games like that, you know, because I think there's a lot of people who haven't haven't played Panzer General. Um, so, and, and plus, I just want to play a lot of... I want to start playing games that um, are more of something that you could sink your teeth into. Like, I'm not super into the idea of... Um, doing uh games that span multiple streams uh it was fun uh doing that with uh zelda 2 but um i just don't want to make a habit of it but uh i think it would be cool to um play it play one game like the whole stream is just going to be this one game like this is the game we're playing and if you don't like it then you can just go ahead i guess and not watch the stream um, and definitely that's going to be the case, uh, when we start playing more, uh, PC games. Uh, I still really want to do, uh, a syndicate live stream, but for some reason to me, it's just like, we have to play that game on a Saturday afternoon, which I know sounds weird, but like, you know, that's the kind of game I used to spend uh, a whole weekend playing. Um, and I just think it'd be a fun way to spend a Saturday afternoon. And so for me, it just has to be, uh like a thing where, you know, maybe my wife has to go to work or she's not home or, uh, you know, as the weather warms up, you know, my wife's main hobby is gardening. And, um, so as the weather warms up, she's going to be spending more time out in the garden. And, uh, you know, she's very supportive of, um, sorry, I don't, I feel like I've migrated away from the microphone. Um, you know, she's supportive of the whole streaming thing. And I mean, when I got the, um, when I got the, uh, YouTube plaque thing, Oh, which, by the way, I'm not trying to, you know, toot my own horn, but just for those people who weren't here at the beginning, uh, we got the uh, the YouTube plaque in the mail yesterday. So uh, pretty momentous occasion uh, for the show. Uh, anyway, I think when when that plaque got here yesterday, I, I texted her a picture of it, and um, I think she was more excited about it even uh, than I was, and... Um, you know, certainly, I think early on, um, my 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 wife was maybe a little bit uh, less, a little bit less supportive. Uh, I don't mean that in a bad way. I just think you know, for those of you who are followers of Bithead's show, uh, you know, I think he kind of went through the same thing where he was putting all this effort into the show and not really getting much out of it, and that, that's really quite normal. Uh, when you start something like a YouTube channel or uh, well, especially a podcast, making money with a podcast is difficult. Um, and, uh, you know, so when I was spending all of this time, uh, uh, you see, so I'm spending all, all my time going into the walls here. Um, you know, I was spending all of this time working on the show and sort of not hanging out with my wife. And it's like, well, what do you have to show for it? But, you know, at the same time, she also, you know, as the show started to take off, uh, which has been a number of years now, you know, she's expressed more interest. It's like, oh, well, how many views have you gotten on this video so far? Or, or uh, oh, man, someone hit me with a missile, uh, you know, or or whatever. And, um, you know, I think she's enjoyed seeing uh, me kind of turn it into something semi-successful. And so, um, you know, I, it's definitely not about money as, for her because, I mean, she really doesn't. Well, I don't know if that, I was going to say she doesn't benefit financially, but in a way she kind of does because, you know, I think anybody, any one of you uh, is the same as, as uh, we're all gamers, right? And so, like, you spend some of your money on video games and, like, I, the only money I spend on video games is, like, my YouTube AdSense revenue. Uh, and part of that is just because really the only games I buy are games for the show. But um, having a YouTube channel has basically meant that I have a hobby that's sort of um, self-sustaining. And so I guess in that way she benefits, but I don't think she really cares. Like she doesn't have some expectation that I'm going to have a hobby that doesn't cost her anything. But uh, but definitely I think what, what she's more, uh, what she gets more happy about is just seeing that all the work is, is paying off in terms of me having an audience because nobody wants to, whether you're a writer or a, a podcaster or, you know, a, a video maker, uh, nobody wants to feel like they're just like uh, screaming into a black hole and having nobody um, consuming their content. And so for for me to have hit uh, a milestone like that, that I thought 
uh, would never be possible. Uh, she she gets as much of a kick out of that, um, if not more, uh, than I did. I think the video is too. Um, the the audio is too low again. Um. Yeah. No. My. I. I would. I was kind of worried about. You know. I, my. My wife's a very cool lady, for sure. I just think you know. Um, I think that her, her reaction to like, you know, the early days of my YouTube thing, I think it's pretty natural. It's just like, at that point, it really was just a hobby. And so it's like, okay, you're spending all your free time on this hobby instead of like, you know, doing stuff with, with me or whatever. And like, you know, it'd be no different than if I was playing World of Warcraft or something, you know, like she doesn't want to turn into a gaming widow or whatever. Don't you be shooting rockets at me, pal. She actually, well, I don't want to say that part, actually. I'll just say she was, I'll just say she was very happy for me when I got the plaque yesterday. I don't know. I feel like I'm, I'm, Playing this game so badly that I don't, I, I have a, I seriously doubt this is entertaining to watch. Um, so, I mean, I'll go ahead and run the last lap anyway, so I'm going to finish up the race. But um, uh, I kind of got half a mind to uh, go ahead and pop one more game in. I forgot what we have left. We have, only two we have left are Gex and Road Rash. Uh, Gex is not really a pick up and play game, I don't think. Um, but I think Road Rash is. Oh, hey, Pedro's here. What's up, man? Um, all right, that's the end of that. Uh, I, was, I want to catch up on the uh, chat real quick, uh, including answering uh, Pedro. Okay, uh, Mike McFly wants to know, what's your favorite pizza topping? Oh, I, I hate to answer this because my favorite pizza topping is a divisive issue for people. Uh, my favorite pizza is uh, Hawaiian. Although, uh, I like... Um, Crap, what's it called when it's just uh, mozzarella and basil? It flew out of my head. Um, or just a plain cheese pizza is pretty good, to be honest. But, uh, but yeah, I love Hawaiian pizza. So, or even, uh, and out of the two, if I can only have one, it'd be the pineapple. Because I like that whole sweet and salty. You, you got sweet and salty and fatty. You know, it's like Chinese food, man. Like, it's perfect. Um, anyway, uh... Yeah, so uh, thank you to everybody who was saying congratulations. I appreciate that. Uh, uh, that also reminds me of um, somebody actually emailed me and asked me about the game guide giveaway. Uh, I could have sworn that I mentioned it on the live stream. Maybe I didn't. Uh, I picked the names for the game guide giveaway and sent out the game guide. So if you didn't get an email, uh, unfortunately, you didn't win. Um, but something I think I meant to mention in a live stream and, uh, and I might not have is um, is just that, you know, I got a lot more, I know I talked about this, I got a lot more entries than I thought I would, and a lot of people took the opportunity to tell me how much they liked my show, but uh, I, you know, I got, like I said, I got a lot of entries, and I just, I don't have time to individually respond to everybody's um, email, but I did read everybody's email, and I do appreciate uh, all of you guys, so, um, so yeah, uh, Margarita Pizza, yeah, Jameson, you're correct. Uh, and then where did you go, Pedro? I've seen everybody's all com upset about the um, Hawaiian pizza thing. Uh, Pedro, if you sent a postcard from uh, where you went on vacation, uh, I have not gotten it yet, but I haven't been to the post office in, uh, in a f I don't know, since Friday, maybe? Friday, yeah. Last time I went was Friday, so uh, so it's very possible that it's there now. Um, I was kind of wondering though, because I, I don't think I got a reply for from you uh, when I sent you that last email, and so I was I was kind of worried that maybe I upset you or something, but uh, like I just didn't want you to send me something that I can't have or that I'm not going to use. So I just I didn't want you to waste your time or waste your money. So, um, uh, and yeah, Rockman pineapple pizza is hugely popular, but it seems like the kind of thing uh people either love it or hate it like you don't ever hear it's it's like anchovies on a pizza like people either are like really into it or it's disgusting 
And uh, it seems like it's the same thing with pineapples on pizza. So uh, Yakka Warner's leaving uh, later, Yak. Uh, where? Oh, it's over here. Cocaine is popular. Doesn't mean I should want it on my pizza. Well, have you ever had it on your pizza? I mean, I would think that that's not the best way to consume Coke, but I mean, what do I know? All right, so we're going to skip Gex, like I said, just because that doesn't mean we can't play it again someday, uh, sometime. But um, I just think Road Rash, we can play like one race of Road Rash or something, and then we can um, bring bring tonight's stream to a close. And then I have to wait a whole week before I do another one. Although, who knows? Maybe I'll do another secret one. I'm going to be honest, and, and I think I said this. I either said it in the live stream or I think I said it afterwards in the Discord chat. Um I really like doing the secret live stream. There was only about eight people watching and it just felt a lot more sort of, I don't know if intimate's the right word, but it was just like, it was easier to like talk to everybody in the chat and keep up with the chat without having to like pause the game for five minutes to catch up, which like, I don't mind doing that at all. I just can see where, you know, if you're watching the live stream, maybe, maybe when I'm pausing the game and just running my mouth for five minutes, maybe that's boring. I don't really know. Um... Why is this all skippy? Hmm. Hold on. The, the disc is a little bit... This disc is a little bit less than clean, so I'm going to... Let me see if I can... Just give me... I have alcohol wipes here, so let me see what I can do. Hopefully I'm not about to ruin my disc. It did not ruin the disc. And yes, I'm wiping it on my jeans, which I'm sure... Oh, wow, that really cleaned that disc. Uh, which I'm sure is cringy for some people. And now I'm breathing alcohol vapor. Go over there. Um, but yeah, so other people like Mujanga says hot peppers, green olives, and spicy sausage. I mean, I'm not. I love all those things, too. Uh, I'm not a pizza snob, like I, plain cheese, pepperoni, vegetarian, uh, the full, you know, supreme slash combination, uh, meatballs are really good on a pizza, like sliced up meatballs, uh, is pretty awesome. I don't like things like ground beef on a pizza. Like I remember when I was growing up, see, look, now it's not skipping. Um, when I was growing up, that was, uh, something that, uh, Jonathan and his family would get on a pizza. They would get beef and, and all it was, was like ground beef like in little, little like ground beef boogers. And it's like, see, this is what I'm talking about right here. This is how we're going to get in trouble. But at the same time, that's a really good Soundgarden song, which, uh, by the way, so that's Rusty Cage by Soundgarden. Uh, if you've never heard Johnny Cash's cover of Rusty Cage, uh, it's pretty cool. So, um, so you should check it out. But, I'm kind of talking over it because I don't want to let it just play by itself because uh, I don't want to get into um, copyright trouble. You can't remember the last time you had cocaine pizza. Um, when in Germany, don't o don't order pepperoni pizza. You'll get a hot pepper. Yeah, that's true. They call pepperoni. Yeah. Um, do Germans like spicy stuff? Not that I know of. Not that I've ever seen. Um, I don't know. Do, do Germans make good pizza though? Because, uh, oh, Johnny Cash performed this song on the Tonight Show once. That would be cool to check out. And hell yeah, R.I.P. Chris Cornell. You know, it's like all the, um, so many of the great front men from when I was growing up, like as a teenager, um, are gone now. I feel like, uh, what's his face from Pearl Jam is like the only one left. Ground bees? Yeah, that would be really weird. Although, who knows? Uh, what was I saying? Uh, the worst pizza I've ever had in my life was um, was when I was in Finland, actually. You know, everybody, everybody's all excited because I have that Finland sign in my room. And when I went, you know, I went to Finland for work. And, um, but like by myself. Um, the arcade version of Road Rash. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, I went for work so, by myself, you know, because it was like I got hired by this company and like everybody had to go to Finland. Um, 
it was like for training because it was a part of the company that my company kind of bought out at some point, but they were a Finnish company. And uh, and my boss was telling me like, oh, you have to go to this pizza place. No, no, yeah, Teresa, no, Finland is awesome. Like, I want to go back. Uh, you never hear anybody talk about Finland as like a, a, a vacation destination, but I it was awesome. Like, mind you, I went like in like late May, early June. But, um, but I mean, it was beautiful. Uh, but anyway, uh, my boss told me, he's like, oh, you have to go, uh, you have to go get pizza at, uh, at this, you know, this one, uh, pizzeria, which, um, I'm trying to remember the name of the pizza place. I can't remember, but he's like, oh, it's like the best pizza ever, you know? And, uh, so I go, uh, and, and so while I was on this trip, uh, so like I said, it was training. And so it was me. And there was like, there were three other guys who were also new hires. But uh, one guy was from Belgium. One guy was from Portugal. And, uh, and one guy was from China. And uh, the, it was, the Chinese guy did not speak like a word of English. So I don't really understand how he got anything out of the training. But I mean, I don't know. I guess he did his best or whatever. But um, we didn't really, I felt bad. Like we didn't really hang out with the Chinese guy very much. Like the three of us, like me and the Portuguese guy and the Belgian guy, like we instantly just all got along uh, really well. Uh, they they both spoke, you know, perfect English because I think pretty much everybody in Europe, uh, everybody who's young anyway. Um, well, maybe maybe not French people or Italians. I'm not really sure, but in most European countries, they know English as a second language. So anyway, um, we all got along great. Like we go out to the bars, and and the the Belgian guy was like, you know, like oh you gotta try this Belgian beer or that Belgian beer or whatever. And I mean, we would literally, uh, we would, we would meet every day for breakfast cause it was at the hotel. Uh, although it was weird. It was, you know, a Finnish breakfast and Finnish people have a, a fascination with hot dogs, man. Like I've never eaten so many hot dogs in my life. They put that stuff in everything, but then like for breakfast, like at the hotel breakfast, there'd be like little smokies, you know, which like, I love little smokies. Uh, but anyway, we would meet for breakfast every day and then we would eat lunch at the facility cause it had a cafeteria. And then uh, every night we would go out for dinner. And um, uh, and I'm getting way off topic with the story, but like I remember, so and so every night we would go out, we would eat dinner, and then we would just after dinner we would just go walk around the town because it was kind of a small smaller town, like it wasn't in Helsinki, uh, it was in Turku, which is not like a tiny town, but it's I think the town I live in now is probably bigger. And we would just go like walk along the river or just like, or go check stuff out. Or, you know, it's kind of like walking off your dinner, you know? Ooh. And I remember one night we were walking, uh, we walked past a Chinese restaurant and the Chinese guy was in the restaurant. I believe his name was Tong. I don't, the, the Portuguese not, guy's name was Joao. Joao, I'm probably not pronouncing that right. It's just Portuguese for John, I think. And uh, I can't remember the Belgian guy's name, maybe Patrick or something. I think it was Patrick. And anyway, uh, we walk past the Chinese restaurant and, uh, and the Chinese guy sees us and he comes like running outside and like, he can't really, um, speak English that well. So I, we, I couldn't tell what he was saying totally, but it was obvious that he, he was trying to get us to come inside and join him. And you, and he was really animated about it. He really wanted us to come inside and he was sitting in there by himself. And that's when I kind of, we, we just kind of didn't pay the guy any mind. And that's when I realized like. The three of us are all hanging out together every night, and and Tong is just by himself, and he's probably like lonely, because uh, he really wanted us to come inside, and and we're talking, and they're like, well, we already ate dinner, and I was like, so what? Like, let's just we'll go in and just sit at the table with him, and let's just get a beer. Like, we'll sit and we'll have it. Like, he's eating, and we'll just have a beer, and so that's what we did. Like, we just went inside, and and you know, he was trying to get us to eat food, and we're like, oh no no no, we ate, but we ordered. Like, he told us to what beer to get. And so like, you know, we ordered a beer and I ended up talking to him and, and I was asking him how to like, you know, how to ask for certain things at a Chinese restaurant. Uh, cause this was an actual, this was a Chinese restaurant, like run by like Chinese people who had moved to, to Turku, Finland. So like, at least according to him, it was like very legit Chinese food. And apparently he was eating there every single night. Um, but yeah, anyway, so, you know, after that, we kind of, we kind of tried to hang out with him a little bit more, but in a way he was, he was kind of having more fun than we were because like he was actually going out on the weekends because, you know, I was there for 16 days. So I was there for two weekends 
and um, we wouldn't really do anything on the weekends. We would hang around town. But uh, if you're in Turku, you can um, you can take uh, what's the peninsula? Let's check that out. Um, uh, you can take a ferry, like an overnight ferry, to Stockholm, Sweden. And apparently, there's like gambling on the ferry, and there's a bar. Like apparently, everybody the the point is that you get on the ferry, and you just get stupid drunk, and then go to sleep, and then when you wake up the next morning, you're in Stockholm, Sweden. So like he went and did stuff like that, which we did not do. So I mean, he wasn't having too bad of a time. But uh, but anyway, now that I've gotten way off topic, uh, so one night for dinner, uh, we go to uh, to this pizzeria. Oh. It was Pizzeria Dennis. Like, that was the name of the place, Pizzeria Dennis. And we go in there, and uh, and I think I actually ordered... So this is like my, uh, my pizza pro tip for everybody. If you're going to a new pizza place, and you want to see, like, how good the quality of the pizza is, order, like, a margarita pizza. Because it's, like, the simplest pizza. And if that's no good, then the place sucks. And... Um, so I ordered a margarita pizza, and then uh, Patrick and Joao both ordered uh, a cheeseburger pizza. That's what it was called, a cheeseburger pizza. And we're sitting there eating these pizzas, and uh, and I'm just like, oh my god, like this pizza is horrible. Like the like the crust was terrible, the the sauce was terrible, the cheese was terrible. It was like, like I'm not kidding when I say that like a five dollar hot and ready pizza from from uh, uh, Little Caesars is better than Pizzeria Dennis, right? I'm, I ate it, but I was just like, oh, I don't like this at all. But like Patrick and Joao were both like, oh my God, this is like the best pizza I've ever had in my life. You know, like like they're just like, they couldn't eat the pizza fast enough. And, and so then I start like second guessing myself and I'm like, well, you know, maybe I just don't, maybe I got a bad pizza. Maybe they don't know how to make margarita pizza, you know? And so I make the stupid, uh, uh, the stupid decision that like maybe the next week or something, uh, we should go back to Pizzeria Dennis because I'm gonna get the cheeseburger pizza because maybe that's like, you know, that's Dennis's like how specialty is like cheeseburger pizza, you know, and so we go back and I order the cheeseburger pizza, and I'm telling you, uh, I am not exaggerating uh, for like storytelling effect. Uh, I mean this very honestly. This pizza tasted exactly like a McDonald's cheeseburger. Like they, they totally nailed it that like in, I guess instead of sauce, it was ketchup. And then of course it had ground beef all over it. Uh, the cheese was American cheese and it had as toppings besides the ground beef, it had pickles and, uh, onions like, you know, uh, chopped up white onions. And it, I don't remember if it had mustard or not. I wouldn't be surprised. Now, if you're in the mood for a McDonald's hamburger and uh, you're in Turku, Finland, where they don't have McDonald's because they have Hesburger, then, you know, that could be a reasonable substitute. Like go to Pizzeria Dennis and get uh, get a cheeseburger pizza. And I don't know, like fold it in half or roll it up or something. But uh, as a pizza, uh, it was just awful. And it, I guess it didn't surprise me that the other two guys liked it only because, like, I don't know what pizza is like in uh in Portugal or, or Belgium. And like, you know, you know, I live in California where we have all kinds of good food and like, you know, you can get, you can get any kind of pizza you want here. You can get a $5 hot and ready pizza or you can get a $30 pizza. I mean, I think the pizzas we had in San Francisco at the, my life in gaming thing were like at least 30 bucks, but Oh my God, they were good. Um, so you can get whatever you want. I think what surprised me was that my boss liked it so much because he lives down in like Orange County, and it's like you can get good pizza down there. Like, why do you want? Why do you want that? Uh, anyway, uh, so we're gonna have to get the stream wrapped up here in a minute. So uh, I'm gonna scroll up and um, and check the chat. I see I, I uh, missed quite a bit, but uh, I think we're we're done playing games for the evening at least. Uh, it has been two and a half hours in my defense. Uh, if you love 90s and, and aughts, do you say aughts? How do you say that? If you say, like, I would say 90s and 2000s, but I don't really know um, what the uh, proper verbiage is uh, there. Anyway, uh, extreme sports racing games, you really need to play 
Trials Rising, which just recently came out. The soundtrack is straight Tony Hawk, and the game is just so fun to play. That'd be cool. Uh, I don't know what what system did that come out on. I mean, obviously, I could just look it up or something, but I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna forget. But uh, I mean, that sounds like something that I would like to uh, check out. Stephen Parker says, "Hey, man, finally able to join. Always watch these after the fact." Um, yeah, well, thanks uh, thanks for coming and 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 welcome. Uh, a lot of people uh, watch these uh, after the fact. A surprising number. More people watch the live streams not live than watch them live, and that's why I always make sure to um, to post them uh, instead of, you know, like My Life in Gaming, they just do, um, they have like an unlisted, they have a playlist because they leave them all unlisted, but um, I want to make sure that um, everybody gets to watch them. I wish more people got to watch them live, I guess. I guess it would be helpful if, I, helpful if I didn't always do it every night, but at the same time, I think there's a certain value to um, to doing them at the same time uh, every week. B.B. Uh, Garnett says, Turku is Captain Clydesdale's hometown. I'm sorry, I don't know who uh, Captain Clydesdale is. Uh, Teresa seems to know um, what he's talking about. Pedro says, you appreciate the reply? No, man. I mean, I appreciate... Uh, so Pedro, for anybody um, who doesn't know, uh, Pedro sent us a postcard from Chile. He was the guy that sent us the Chilean postcard. Uh, at least I hope I'm not confusing you with somebody else. Otherwise, I look like a real dope right now. Um, a lot of Scandinavian things start with getting stupid drunk. Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, I had a lot of good food while I was there. That was funny. Like, my coworkers were telling me, like, oh, you know, get ready to eat a bunch of crappy food. And, like, that pizza was, like, the only crappy thing, at least in my opinion, crappy thing that I ate while I was there, you know? Like, I don't understand. Like, do you not like meat and potatoes? And I don't know. I, I thought the food there was great. So um, Pedro says, next time we'll be visiting California for sure. Really cool place to do trail bike. Yeah. Uh, well, if you come to California, if you're in Northern California, uh, let me know. Uh, Josh says, this is a great story. I hope so. Um, Cero555, second time I make it to the live stream. Well, um, welcome, man. Thanks. Uh, I love that it's called Pizzeria Dennis. Yeah, I mean, what a random... I mean, I, I assume that the, the guy that owns the place is called Dennis, but I, I don't know. I still think that's a funny name for um, for a um, for a pizzeria. But uh, oh, I, one one place we also ate there uh, multiple times. There was a uh, this place called Harold. It was H A R A L D, and uh, it was like this Viking themed restaurant. Like you could get. So it's funny. I'd only been working for this company for like a month when um, when I went over there. And I had like, you know, they gave you like a corporate credit card, not, not just for the trip, but just to have. And, um, and so when you went, uh, when you went traveling to, to stuff like that, you just, you put everything on the credit card and the credit card just got automatically paid. And there were all these rules about like, well, you can't spend more than this on this and that on that. And at my, the job I had previous to that, those were like very strictly enforced rules. Like if, if they tell you, you can spend 40 bucks on dinner and you spend 45, the other fives coming out of your own kick. And, um, and so I was like super nervous because this was my first time ever, um, going to Europe was this trip to Finland. And, uh, as anybody here who is either in Europe or has ever been to Europe knows, uh, eating out in Europe is more expensive than it is here. And so we would go to like these restaurants and I would look at the menu and like everything was expensive. And I was like, Oh man, like that's more than I'm supposed to spend for dinner, you know? And so I was always ordering the cheapest thing on the menu. Like, I'm like, chicken. And, um, but the other two guys were like, they just didn't care. And at Harold, uh, the most expensive thing on the menu was, uh, they gave you a sword that had all these different meats, like impaled on the sword, like, you know, some chicken and a steak and some sausages. Uh, they served bear sausage there. And, uh, and one night Joao actually ordered that and it, I mean, it was like a hundred euros and he's just like, whatever. And I came to learn later that, uh, nobody actually really gave a crap how much you spent on that corporate card. And I could have just bought whatever I wanted, but, uh, but that was a cool restaurant. Like they served you stuff in like wooden bowls and whatnot. And, um, but the coolest thing they had, they had pine tar ice cream. And, uh, I think it was just vanilla ice cream, but it had pine tar, some kind of pine tar syrup, um, drizzled on top of it. And that probably sounds gross, but it was actually really good. 
And uh, the funny part about that is that uh, at least where I was in Turku, they would use pine tar to like seal wood. Like if you if you put up a fence and you didn't want to paint it, they would they would coat it in pine tar. And uh, after I'd had the pine tar ice cream sundae or whatever, uh, a couple of times at Harold, I was walking around one night and somebody had just put up a fence and painted it in pine tar. And I was just like, oh, that smells delicious. But uh, I think I ate reindeer while I was over there. Uh, it was like a little reindeer steak. Uh, it was it was fine. I guess it just tasted like deer. Um, oh, but then, uh, so I said they don't have McDonald's there. And I'm sure they have McDonald's there a little bit. But what they have that's popular in Finland is this restaurant called Hesburger. And um, it's very similar to McDonald's. But uh, Hesburger's like hometown where their corporate headquarters are is in Turku. And I I don't know if maybe they think it's like bad optics to have like competing restaurants there. So like there's literally a Hesburger on like every single block in like the city center of Turku. And even in, there's like the town square. Like it seems like every European city has a town square. And then that's where like the open air market is every day. There's like a Hesburger on the town square, like a little walk up uh, Hesburger. And um, it's mostly the same stuff, but like there you could get, like one of their big things that they have, uh, it's like a Big Mac, but instead of two hamburger patties, it's two fried chicken patties. Uh, it's really good. Uh, in fact, that's one of the only words I, I learned. Uh, Hampura Linen is uh, Finnish for a hamburger. Uh, I learned that just as I ordered one, you know, multiple times. And then Huva Hoamenta is good morning because we had this crazy... Like everybody that I worked that I worked with at that company all knew about this crazy track, uh, tax, taxi driver lady because they would hire, like she had like a private taxi that, um, you know, my company paid for her to pick us up every morning at the hotel and drop us off at the facility. And they just had a relationship with her. And so it was always like, oh yeah, did you meet like so-and-so? And, um, and she would, every morning we'd get in the car and she would make us say good morning to her in Finnish. And I remember Patrick was like, he didn't want to do it because he felt like I'm not your monkey. Like you don't grind your organ and have me dance. And so he didn't want to do it. He's like, oh, I'm not saying it, like get over it. And she literally was like, we're not going anywhere. I mean, she's the one driving the car and she's like, we're not going anywhere until you say it. And so finally he said it just to, cause we had to go to work, you know? But the, so the funny part about that was that, you know, she was all up our butts with that kind of stuff. And then remember I mentioned Tong, uh, the Chinese guy, for some reason he was like three days late coming to training. Like for some reason he had some kind of visa issue or something and, um, he couldn't, uh, he couldn't leave China and, uh, and come to, uh, Finland. And so for the first two or three days, it was cause I think training started on like a Wednesday. It was like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then you got the weekend off and then the next week. And so I think Tong didn't show up until like Monday. So we were actually there for like five days before he showed up. And it was the funniest thing. As soon as Tong showed up, it's like me and Joao and Patrick didn't even exist to the taxi driver lady. Like she was fascinated by him. Like she's trying to teach him Finnish. She's trying to get him to teach her how to speak Chinese. Uh, oh my God, she was just nuts. Um. All right, anyway, uh, not hungry anymore after the pizzeria, Dennis, cheeseburger pizza. Yeah, I don't... Um, I don't blame you. Um, sorry, the, the chat thing jumped around, so now I'm not sure where I left off here. Um, oh, there we go. Uh, McDonald's bur- uh, burger pizza sounds disgusting unless you're perhaps a kid. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel. Like, I bet if you're like five, that's uh, delicious. Uh, Mike says, I guess I never mentioned it, but I seriously eat pizza like 95% of the time. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, pizza's awesome, but I, you know, I don't exercise enough. And I'm old, so uh, if I ate pizza 95% of the time, I would just have a really fat ass. Um, Oh, good. Thank you for posting the uh, Discord link there. Well, you don't have to spam it. Jeez. (laughs) I'm just kidding. Um, uh, De Forte, thank you again. Sword meat fun. Yeah, if I ever go back. Sorry, I yelled. Uh, if I ever go back to Turku, I am a hundred percent getting some of that sword meat. Like that's one of my one of my great regrets in life is that I did not get uh, the the meat sword. 
that sounds dirty, but you know what I'm saying. Um, Chris K says, you're making your first trip to Europe this fall. That's awesome, man. Uh, you're going to Amsterdam. Uh, yeah, for sure. That's awesome. Um, uh, have fun. Uh, Daniel says, are you still going to play Super Metroid? Um, yeah, not tonight, but, uh, uh, yeah, for sure. That would, uh, I would love to, but that, that's the kind of game where if like, if we're going to play Super Metroid one night, uh, we're just going to play Super Metroid. It's not a game that you play for like 20 minutes, but, uh, I mean, I love that game. So, so yeah, I would love to play it. In the old city part of Salzburg, the McDonald's sign is the old one where you put a symbol inside a metal. I don't even know what you're talking about. Um, so McDonald's had a small golden arches hanging through a metal wreath. That'd be cool. I don't know what you're talking about, but that would be, uh, neat to see. Um, she does have to spam it. She's from Minnesota. Is that where spam is from? Minnesota? Um, meat sword equals gay. All right. Well, take it easy, but yeah, kind of, um, love the fat tire sign. Yeah. I, oh, sorry. Wrong way. Yeah, uh, I mentioned it before, but uh, that's an awesome fat tire sign because it's actually, uh, it's not like the kind of thing that you would get at the gift shop. That's like, like I don't know if it's cast iron or what. It's really, really, really heavy. It's the kind of thing that uh, that New Belgium would have uh, given to a uh, bar or something to put up. Uh, like the, the Sierra Nevada sign and the Anchor Steam sign are both just like really, really, really thin metal because those are the kind of signs you just get at a gift shop. But uh, the New Belgium sign is much nicer. And um, I know he's not uh, here live, but uh, uh, I know Rory watches these live streams, uh, at least watches the uh, archive. And I'm still going to put up the Atari Age magazine artwork here. I just haven't had a chance to take it. I need to take it and get it mounted on foam core, and I just haven't done that yet. So, um, But I will. Uh, anyway, uh, it... Uh, uh, oh, sorry, you said what's your favorite... What's your favorite stout? Um, Guinness. Um, anyway, um, Rob the Robot seems unmoved by the fat tire sign. Where's Rob the Robot? Oh, he's over there. Um, yeah, one night I need to bring Rob the Robot down here and have him be the um, co-host. Uh, anyway, uh, that's going to do it for the stream tonight. Uh, geez, now it's like 8.17, so I got to go. Um, but, uh, you know, once again, uh, thank you, uh, to all you guys for hanging out. Uh, thank you for all the super chat contributions. I don't know what I'm going to buy next, uh, for the show. I guess maybe some nice, uh, what I really need are like some, uh, like earbuds that are like monitor, like monitor quality, but I don't want to buy anything super expensive, but I just need something that's not like, oh, these are super bassy. Um, so I'll find something. And, uh, you know, for those of you that want to keep chatting, uh, you know, I would just encourage you to please head over to the discord, uh, because that's where people are going to be hanging out, including me. So, uh, and if you don't want to do that, then, uh, then I'll see you, uh, next week. AirPods. Yeah. I can't use AirPods because they're wireless and I don't know how I would interface that with, uh, with my mixer. That's also more than I want to spend. I just, I don't mind the cord. Uh, I just want to find something like the little skull candy things or something, but I just need something that has more of a flat, uh, audio profile, if that's the right terminology, uh, rather than being something that's like super bassy. So, uh, so yeah, anyway, uh, good night to, uh, to everybody. And, uh, I'll see you guys next week. I don't know what we're streaming next week. Uh, like I said that the black box NES stream would be cool. Uh, I don't know about doing 3DO next week just cause we did, uh, the PlayStation this week. So maybe we'll do the, uh, black box, uh, Nintendo games thing, uh, next week. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But, uh, thanks again to everybody for hanging out. And I'll uh, see you again soon.